call this meeting of um, CPDC to order. Um, so if you'd like to take two uh, items out of order, we can start with the continuances of Howard Street and Main Street. I believe only Main Street gave you the actual letter, but Howard Street did request continuance as well. Um, so uh, um, the schedule that I see here with these two items being at 815 and 830 were those, that's how th this was originally posted? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we don't, you know, just to know if people have come show up late we'll mm -hmm. we can point them let them know yeah um, um so we'll take first the um uh subdivision definitive subdivision plan for 135 139 and 149 rear howard street um is this the one we have the letter on uh, no so they Right. You just said they, yep, they, they requested, um, requested that we continue. June 10th. And we can say, looking at my agenda for that, we could put them on for 7.30. That's how I have it written right now. Motion. Uh, move that the CBDC continue the public hearing for the public resolution. 135, 139, 149 are Fowler Street for June 10th at 7.30 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Um, and then we'll take the item for 258, uh, 262 Main Street. Um, and they did s submit a request uh, letter to um, um, continue it for June 10th. What time is that one? Uh, I have it plugged in at 8 o'clock right now. So. Okay. Uh, move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for a site plan review of 258 262 Main Street, Reading CRE Ventures LLC to June 10th at 8 p.m. Second. All those in favor? All right, um, jumping back to the beginning of our agenda, um, uh, master signage plan for 606 Main Street, the MF Charles building. Is that, um, do we have an applicant here, is that you? That's me. All right. <laughs> well, the landlord and the three, well, I guess the three tenants don't matter, right? That's a separate permit. Yeah, and that'll be a so separate so application. It just, yeah. And so the the issue here is that um, yes, uh, what is really being changed um, for the master signage plan so from what we had approved before? If you look on the actual drawing that is from the prior master signage plan and had with revised it to reflect that the sign facades fronting Main Street would now be used for second floor commercial tenants and third floor <laughs> commercial tenants. Um, this, I'm not sure how many businesses are on the second floor. There's but none. On, it's the none. bank. No. Chances are that may never happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but because the three tenants on the third floor were pretty, uh, you know, they did um, extensive build outs. They spent a lot of money. They're not going anywhere, mm -hmm. and they have no presence on Main Street. So they pretty much want to use that, but I think for future, if the bank ever did leave that space, that would allow for anyone on the second floor to have a that space for a sign. Yep. So that one sign block would, in theory, hold three signs for the businesses on the third floor. And they would also like the directory sign as shown in the images here to help direct people towards the floor that the business is going on. And that sign, that's in the back, right? The directory yeah. sign? There's no, like all of those 
the MF Child's building really extends to like Good Hearts and all that, mm -hmm. right? So they all have signs and back entrances, and this one back entrance for every tenant doesn't have any anything. anything. It doesn't have a northern bank sign. It, it only has those big letters above, but they 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 take pretty much the well they do take the whole second floor and that portion of the first floor. Right then, right here, you can see. Right, and they chose that sign over the second mm -hmm. sign on um, uh, Main, Main Street. Street. I think yeah. so, yes. Saying that the third, second, and third floor tenants would only have signs on Main Street. Mm -hmm. This wouldn't wrap around. Um, so on that Haven Street side, <coughs> those are more like um, storefronts, like Subway and all that. They have their own um, sign above their awning. Um, so anybody on that first floor would have that, and the bank does too. They didn't utilize, I don't think, I don't remember if the bank utilized it, but they all have their own spot there, so they don't need it. It's just the Main Street people that don't have, um, the both floors that don't have any um, presence on Main Street. And that actually is their entrance. 606, which is, I guess, the third floor, that, um, that's their entrance, that's their front entrance, so that's why they want that sign anyway. So this, the... The one that the door on Main Street, you can get up to the second floor, yes. the second, third floor, and you could go around back. Yeah, you know, where this directory sign is right. and get up there as well. <clears throat> I think it used to be like an ATM, but they don't oh, now yeah. it's an entry. Yeah. And the address is really 600 through 622. Mm -hmm. There are actually three signs in each of the ban and of the panels. Um, on the third floor, there's three three tenants, so that would be on the second floor. There's just the bank, and they already have a sign, so they wouldn't use it. If the bank ever left, I mean, I don't know what the build out would be. If one person took the floor, if three tenants took the floor. Um, it's really just to secure their future. They don't expect the bank going anywhere, but to be fair to anyone who did move in. Um, yeah, yeah, but I guess what I wouldn't want is for the bank to have a sign there. Because I don't they think have, they can. They have signs. Right, but they're not allowed to have. I think it says, does it say future second, possibility of future second floor tenant? Yeah, probably. As opposed to present? I'm sure it's worded that way. I guess they would then come back and claim that they are a second floor tenant mm -hmm. and want to utilize that sign. And I don't think we should let them because that's like work around. Well, aren't they only allowed two signs anyway? They are. And they already have two? Yes. Okay. But so should we change the wording then a little? Yeah, well, let's make sure we word it the right way. Are you going to put this into the um, submit? Mm -hmm. This existing one, because this is old and wrong. This, one, this old drawing showed the Northern Bank sign at the top of the new um, lobby mm -hmm. that they built, but they didn't. They weren't allawed to put that one in. They put it down at the um, Where it awning, right on the. Campus. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. <coughs> Where it says bank lobby. Yeah. If you have the correct one, you can go back and adjust it or whatever. Okay, I'll take a look. Sorry, so this is what it... Right. So this one's over here already. Yeah. This one's already on the right side. Yeah. So because they have two awnings, that's enough. 
not one sign. No, because they're only allowed to have one. They were only allowed to have two signs. Um, they they would either put them on these two here and not have anything on the back, or they could put them Oh, and they went on the back. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So they chose there and the back. Okay. Um, I mean, it's obvious it's their entrance. Yeah. But I think we should mark this so that it's understood that these can be divided into. Right, like that one, right? the same thing. Okay. So that, so that you can actually get up to three tenants on that left side, right? That's the intent? Is this the same one? Yeah. Oh, you're right. saying so to show that... Yeah, so that yeah, yeah. it isn't... Un when we're all gone, <laughs> someone's going to ask, well, you can only have one sign. Yeah, right, I see. You want to make sure it's clear that you could have up to, let's okay. say, three signs, because these are good size. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Yeah. Okay. This one makes you have a thing. So, I guess to, to keep extending though, Subway doesn't have a sign above the awning. Are they going to ask for one? Or? They're on the first floor. They have a sign on Haven Street. We do have it above the awning? Um, or that sign. Yeah. So that sign plus a blade sign. Yeah. I always remember that they couldn't find them without dress. So it's not above the, I mean, they have a sign. I, I don't even remember where, I didn't even include them in this because they were on the other yeah, side of the building okay. and they okay. wouldn't. It's yeah. tiny. I just, I remember yeah, not being able to find it ever, so that's why. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if the bank gave up their first floor and started putting separate tenants in there, then each tenant would be allowed a sign. Yeah, I mean, you know, economically, given the number of signs, as part of me is like, just Everybody gets up to one awning, <laughs> and you can buy how much you want, like including according to your rent. The other rule is, no. Uh, I'm just, but that's what I'm saying. saying. I mean, like, so they have a number of awnings, and in the moment the second floor is taken. So you can't have any signs above the second floor. I'm not saying that. Rent. These, yeah. these are real estate that you can rent. Yep. And that's what I'm saying. So. As part of a tenant agreement, I would say that there can be up to three different businesses on each of those, and each business gets a total of a certain amount. And so, in the management company can rent it out. I would say that in this in this master signage um, plan, that part of the conditions is that the plan doesn't impact um, uh, doesn't impact the number of signs allowed per business, All right? Because that's not where, what we're talking about here, right? The, the businesses are allowed however many signs they are per the zoning. Mm -hmm. This doesn't, we're not talking about, this master signage plan does not address the number of signs. It's, and so what we're saying that, I guess, what, uh, yes. And okay. So what I'm saying yeah. is that there's real estate that's not being used and there's businesses that aren't being advertised. And so yep. as a management company, almost like renting a parking spot to, you know, you per, you have the ability to buy up to rent, one up to one over awning sign on either Main Street or... Haven. So you'd be okay with them splitting it up in any other? I mean, what if there were only two stores on the top? I mean, basically, I'm not, I mean, I'm looking at this to say, why not, why doesn't everybody get one <laughs> on here? It makes the building look more populated, personally, than jamming three of them into one of those little things. I guess. Well, their entrance is only right here, though. I, yeah, I, I, I get it. I, I, I understand the logic of this, but then I look at this, and there's this wide open swath of nothing. Back, it Correct, which made it look more empty, just like PDA. And <laughs> yeah, you can't just say bank, 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 bank. But that's what I'm saying. So you get up to a awning, one awning topper per tenant. Well, no, it, no we don't want to get into that because right, they're allowed <coughs> a certain signage size based on their frontage right. period we're not we're not going to change okay. that in in here mm -hmm. it's two square feet for every linear foot of yeah. frontage okay so basically you have a two foot high sign and so we're, we're right. letting folks who have frontage here be included in that yeah we're giving them some way to have a sign um, 
it's going to be old, old things. It'll either be painted signs up here, or maybe there'll be window signs. Window signs. You know, yeah. on the glass. Yeah. Okay. But right now, we don't allow signs above the second floor. Right. Yeah, I, and I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying we have what makes it look like a quiet, unpopulated corner and actually has some vibrancy to it could be used by spreading these out. Yeah, they could do blood signs too though, down the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever you want to write up. Yeah, what about the directory? Where is that? So, down the, off oh. the parking lot. There's nothing you can. No, but you can see the plan. Everybody's represented and equal. We do typically allow yeah, for um, directory signs. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they're typically at like six that, square feet allowed by design. right. No, six it's square it's feet and uh, allowed period so far, right? for the entire building. I believe so. Really? I don't like it with all everybody's unique logos. Personally. What exterior directory? Please. Uh, I'm not sure if it says it has to be interior. I don't remember. The directory is not illuminated. It's not, but we have here instructional and directional signs are allowed provided that such signs shall be limited to wall and freestanding signs with a maximum sign area of four square feet per sign, sorry, and one such sign not exceeding six square feet, six feet in height may be placed at each vehicular entrance or exit on a lot. So we only allow four square feet in area to my right. Mm -hmm. Well, that got, ended up getting all changed because we can't call, right. We can't call things directory signs anymore right. because that's that right. That's about that would be unconstitutional because that's creating um, right n new rules based on the content of the sign. Mm -hmm. yep. well, yeah. Yeah. Which constitution? Thank the lawyers for that. One. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't even have a direct a definition for a directory site. I think we ended. I think that I think we took it out because we had to take we, out anything that described the content, the content of, of it. Yeah, right. So we could only do we could only have um, direction mm -hmm. signs that provide direction, which is what the um, right directory sign would do. So what did we say uh, the sign limit was? Four square feet? Yeah. <laughs> That's smaller than that TV. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that language probably carries over from those interior directories. Yeah, I can see that on inside. Yeah. Letters. No, no, it's it's more it's more about exit. Entrance exit oh, signs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like a driveway? Directory sign. Right. Stop, enter, exit. You know, the, that's re really what that was set up for. Not directory, not not anymore. Not directories sure. anymore. Yeah. We do have under business B, again, one identification sign is allowed for multi tenant buildings and it shall be mounted on the building wall closest to the entrance shall not exceed four square feet in sign area, shall not exceed eight feet in height. Yeah. So four square feet at eight feet. feet. I don't yeah, you can't get there. Yeah. You can't get there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't like that. That's left over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have to make this conform to something, I guess. I'm really not offended by this sign, by the way. It's Thank you. I wouldn't mind the, um, the logo that the scale in this sort of tucked in corner. Okay, least offensive place. I just, if it were not 
in the way back. I don't think I, I don't know. I just, I don't love crazy conflicting fonts. That's all. That's me. And if it was you know, the freestanding sign, they'd each have their own. Which I don't like those. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I don't know how we get that, right? Okay. Four square feet is pretty small compared to what you're proposing here, I guess. Yes, so it is. you want to reconsider that one? Well, we, I don't think we could allow this size, so we could potentially. So we're in the middle? Something. No, we, we can't exceed the number, I don't think. Do we have any leeway? I mean, doesn't master signage plan allow you some leeway to allow signs like this that don't typically be? This is under business B, right? Because yeah. So where does the eight feet in height come from? The maximum. That might mean the top of the sign. Yeah. 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 Leeway to to do um, signs that are different, bigger, or things so. more. It's more about placement and style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically the size of one of the floors. You know, one of the, one of the, one of the bands that represents the floors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two, the one the one floor is two by three. That's even too big. Yeah, Just one floor. but if you took out the black edge, you know, that's, that's about how small it would be. Which is probably enough to give somebody direction. Which when they're small, standing there. When they're standing yeah. there. They don't really need to see it until they walk up to it. They don't need to be able to read it until they walk up to it. So at this point, if there's no leeway for that, there's nothing we can do. And I redesign it, might not be two by two, but whatever, four square feet. Do I then go get a sign permit, or do I have to come back to CPDC? I guess, uh, um, <laughs> speaking out loud here for a minute, I would be okay with, um, uh, in the master signage plan, establishing that a directory sign is allowed in that location. That's going what? A sign. A sign. <laughs> Do we, can we say that? Yeah, I don't know if we can say, yeah. A directional sign or whatever the terminology we use mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, a sign in that, that location. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, that way you don't need to come back here. Oh, yeah, could you know, but you know that it needs to conform with, with, the, with the size mm -hmm. that's allowed. Is there any chance of three four square foot signs? One for each foot? I don't think it's written that way. I don't think so either. What's it say? Hey, it says A sign mounted to the wall. Right. Mm -hmm. What would the tenant have for, like, so now they have this, let's say we're, I'm going to get a permit for the sign for the front. Do they have an option for a sign on the back? Because they're allowed two signs also, or are they? I don't know if they're allowed two signs off the first floor. Or if you're not on the first floor? I don't think so. Didn't. I thought I brought my code with me, but I don't have it. Mm -hmm. um, this Tenants one with frontage on Main Street and or the municipal parking lot may request to place additional signage along the northerly facade, the alleyway of the building, in compliance with the bylaw. That's our decision. That's in the master signage plan. There's lots of things on here. What are you looking for? Uh, it's master signage plan. And I don't know. No, I don't know. Code. Yeah. Zoning. Zoning, we typically only allow one wall sign per business button. Did you include that in this packet? 
Did you include the master sign? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have one more question. If they chose to not use, even though they're allowed now, once this, if this passes, to use the um, panel on the front of the building on Main Street, if they chose to not use that, could they then choose to have a sign at the back? Can you tell them? <laughs> Is that a me? Hold on, because there's a lot of different. There's, there's the code is written by district, right? So by district and then by use. Yeah. You know, so we have to figure out all of it. So it's let's see. Eight. ten. Eight signs right there. Eight. There should be a way to search. They'd be allowed multiple signs, multiple wall signs. Business B. Special regulations. The old sign says two per business, right? But there's Directional signs, building markers. This is signs for which no permit is required. In the table. Building markers are on uh, addresses. It's always going to be the magnetic type sign with the panel. Just pull the slack and change it. Can somebody rip that off? Not really. I mean, you have to get something in there to to lift it. It's not the type of thing that people would real realize you could take it apart. I just did one at another company in, in Chelsea, and you have to really pry it out. So a business occupying the ground floor is allowed two signs. Mm -hmm. If one is a ball sign and one is either a projecting sign or an awning sign. Mm -hmm. One joint identification there you go. is allowed. Listing the names and logos of associated establishments, right? This is, yeah. And that's four square feet. That's the max on that. <laughs> well, I think when the three tenants they proposed this. They said, well, maybe we can do a directory sign for the building. At this point, if it becomes a, a four-square-foot sign, they may just do it for themselves. If that is that possible, does it have to be for everybody? Do it for themselves. Well, they can only have one oh, okay. sign, right? One joint identification sign. So it's basically this sign, but smaller. Somebody yeah. approaches the door, and they can see what floor somebody's on. I think it serves the purpose, certainly. Um, you can't read it from across the parking lot, but that's not the intent of a directional sign anyways. Yeah. They don't have an address either, so I think they'll probably have to use the above the door and put big numbers there. There's no address at the back of the building, so nobody even knows. Like if they say, come in 600 to 606. That's an exempt sign, though. Yeah, I know. No, that's what I'm saying. We'll do that as well because... Um, yeah, I mean, if you put the letters above the door for the numbers, you can reduce how much of the square footage you're taking with right. the 606. Maybe they don't need logos. It can just be... Just make them smaller, I guess. Yeah. You just have to read what floor they're on. Um, I like the sign. You're just going to have to make it smaller. So if they're willing to get a smaller sign, right. then you don't have to come back here. So for a second floor. Right? You yeah. have to everyone on yeah. board with that. Yeah. So. 
And really, if you think about it, it's kind of modular. If the zoning ever gets rewritten where that can increase in size, you would just apply another panel and you'd move the magnets, you know, they could just make the magnets bigger with the band in that sign, I guess. Or if there's more than, what, six tenants? Yeah, they kind of left blanks for the possibility of that floor, that if that did happen, it was all kind of planned that the building, you know, everyone in the building would have a space. Yeah. Plus, you could change the size of the slats. If there ended up being four tenants on that, you'd just make new slats a little yeah. smaller. So you're allowed that one back there. And the other one, I guess we already... I'll change my finding to state that the proposed directory sign for the multi-tenant building would comply with the zoning bylaw for a total of four square feet. Yeah. Well, must comply. I think you should change it from directory signed out to instructional. Yeah. Joint identification sign. Mm -hmm. Just wait for you on that. Sure. Yeah. Joint. This is like eight, eight feet in height, so we are a half a foot. <laughs> well, <laughs> to make four feet, I mean, you could take that somebody sign did and math badly. Up. You could lift it up eight feet, the top of the sign, I guess, right? I guess. Uh, I don't know, I mean, the Pilates sign is really narrow and long, so potentially you get there. But that's not, what the, that's not a joint identification sign, that's a, yeah, sorry. that's a sorry. sign. So, Andrew, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, specifically call out four square feet. Mm -hmm. um, I think what, what you need to do is say that, that, that it'll be in compliance with the zoning so bylaw. And then maybe in parens say, you know, currently mm -hmm. um, as okay. of this date, mm -hmm. four feet. So if something does changes, okay. mm -hmm. something, change that? if something, <laughs> if we're always tinkering awesome. with, right, we're always tinkering with <laughs> the sign by something So wrong with if the something, map. yeah, if something happens where that zoning requirement changes, then, you know, then someone, mm -hmm. you know, three years from now doesn't say, oh, well, they meant that it should only be four square feet. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the intent is. Gotcha. Whatever the zoning bylaw allows mm -hmm. for that type of directory sign or whatever we call it. Sure, <laughs> but you do have to have the number on there now because yes. the inspector has to be able to click right check codes. Yep. When we did the last round of updates to the zoning bylaw for the signage, that's when the Supreme Court. Made their wonderful decision about not content. And so we were so focused on making sure we weren't breaking the law. Yeah, we got some math. Off. <laughs> <laughs> we on else. My guess yeah. is it was the opposite: eight square feet in area and four feet in height. Is my guess? No, I. I probably think that's a little bit more logical. Yeah. Um, and then I think I add a condition. I don't know. I. Or, is it a, or maybe is it a finding that um, the, it does, um, and that it see the number of allowed? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll condition that. Actually, the condition should be that the bank can't use the signs. <coughs> that's because that's part of their agreement from before. They have their two signs. Okay, I can do that for you. We, yeah, but if they wanted to, make, if they, they wanted to eliminate one of the signs, yeah, right. which goes back to the right. point is they're only allowed the, mm -hmm. the, the um, number of signs yeah. out there. Don't put that in there then. The, they're only allowed to yeah. Yeah. remember that when they come back. Got it. And then we'll change the drawing to show that these signs can be divided into three and reflect the current drawing. Well, that was my condition, but I think that. Other people had a different take on that, so you have to ask them what they want. Does anyone object to that? No. No. Okay. So 
it's just those two changes to your draft. Yep, and then to the drawing as well. Yep. Yep. I think that's it. And the only thing I changed on the master signage plan was section 8.0 now of the credits. So under the materials submitted, mm -hmm. number six is the directory in the back. Mm -hmm. So you may want to say something like that. Um, running of the proposed joint identification sign as as amended or as revised. Mm -hmm. Unless you just withdraw that one. Right. That one. Um, I have to see. I don't know what they want to do. Yeah. I'll write it in yeah. for now, and if you <coughs> yeah, because it was it, it was submitted, right? Mm. Yeah, it was proposed by the tenants, but the landlord agreed to it, so that's why I'm here. Mm. I'm the landlord, so I'll mm -hmm. see what they want to do. And did five fifteen. other issues, items. Public comment. Right. I just so ask if there's any public comment. Any public comment on this sign? No. All right. Um, do I have a motion? Sorry, what's the motion? Motion. The motion is to. Um, Motion to approve the master signage plan amendment um, to 600622 uh, Main Street Building, uh, Charles Building, as amended. Mm -hmm. Thank you. MF Charles. Second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Yeah, over there does not in my box anymore. I do not see oh, no. the stamp. No. Nope. No, two gavels, what though. What happened to it? Mm -hmm. Is that a stamp in front of your briefcase, Nick? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tell from the whole side. Yeah, that's what I was Is it in one of the other boxes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, Mm. I'll take a look. Appreciate it. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is um, continued uh, a public hearing for uh, 116 West Street. No. Nope. No? Five. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I read that. Uh, for a sign permit application for uh, 5 Herndon Street, uh, the Dollar Tree. <coughs> So, um, do you, do you have any items first? Do we have a um, rep from? I will say that. So you have mentioned already our stipulation that a wall sign is not allowed above the bottom sill of the second floor window. I'm sorry, I did not include in this packet. I do have an email from our building commissioners that that is not a second floor window. Um, under their reasoning, so that sign would not hinge on that. So, this is the first I've heard of this whole thing going on. I noticed that the uh, drawings that were in the windows before are mm -hmm. gone, I think. Mm -hmm. So they're just proposing the well sign now. What's going on with the windows? As far as I know, nothing, and 
That's why I had conditioned that um, window signs and awning shall be submitted to the staff planner for review and approval and shall conform to our you know, Are they going to open those up? Or are they going to leave those panels? They're just going to leave those panels as far as I know. So I was not at the pre-con. I was away from that meeting. Um, but as far as I've been told, everything is staying the same, and they're just proposing that one sign exactly yeah, where the But it's not thing. staying the same because they took down the artwork that was behind the glass. That was part of the approved site plan for that building. Yes, it was. So, you know, what's their intent? They're going to start putting mannequins in there with dollar crap all mm -hmm. over it. Um, you're talking on the second floor around the back? No, no, no just right the there. first floor. That storefront is blocked up, right? They blocked up those windows because they put their cookie cutter Walgreens, whatever mm -hmm. it was, in there without addressing the street. And they were allowed to do that. I guess they put some sort of, you know, antique artwork on the panels behind the glass. Mm -hmm. Those look like they've been painted over or covered. So I don't know if the intent of Dollar Tree is to then place that with something that is either art and get into this whole thing about what art is if it's displaying products from inside it's not art mm -hmm. I'm caught up in that so I guess really what I mean what I think what you're getting at is we need to go back to the conditions of the um, of the uh, uh, the original use and if they're changing something from that, Mm -hmm. um, then we need to need to look at that. Okay. Sorry. This is just the LED lighting without the LED lights on it. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was. Thinking. It's not. It's not <laughs> painting because you get the lights on top of it. Yeah, I know. Does this green match the green for the bank? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Does it? Oh. Sorry, so Andrew, you're saying any changes, particularly to the awnings uh, as they are right now? Mm hmm. No changes can be made unless they only they go to you and then zoning, but not here, because those are not signs. Uh, so awnings are allowed by right, and I just figured we've had condition before, same with Nella's Pizza, that any window signs or awning changes would have to go through the planning department, so I wanted to ensure that that is done here as well. Yeah, so so an awning can have a, a sign, no, right, no bigger than lettering, three square, like three feet right, long, with six four inches in height or something. something yeah, four inch lettering, small. But they can only have one of those. They can't just write, you know, dollar sale, dollar right. sale mm -hmm. across there. But that would be something that you'd have to approve. Right, because they had also come to us with window signs and this and that illumination in the windows and. Now that I saw that removed, I wanted to make sure that if they do put in window signs, that they would be approved by the planning department. Yeah, I mean, I just, I guess, so where I'm saying is, to me, these are the nicest awnings possible, mm -hmm. and I just don't want them, so those look like cloth awnings, mm -hmm. and I don't, like, it's a downgrade to take what is a nice architectural element here. Oh, are they changing? That's what I'm trying to understand. Are you changing the awnings? I'm just doing he's, he's the signs. The awnings. You're going to, yeah. Right. Okay. We understand you're here with the signs. Yep. And the <clears throat> management company is not here, so. Yeah, I think that's just Some messengers. I thought so too, yeah. I understand. I'm just trying to make sure. So, yeah, so I just want to make sure that in your language, mm -hmm. there is ridiculously strong language that does not allow for changes to the awnings willy nilly here. Mm -hmm. Did they have a DRT? They, would, they need a DRT? They had a 
pre-construction meeting. We haven't seen any minutes to that. How does that? We don't take minutes of pre-time meeting. I thought this thing had gone away, and then I heard that they were coming back. <coughs> um, no, I guess it's not a full DRT because it's not no, a change of use. DRT design design review team. team. Meeting. So they get the police and fire and the building inspector and the but town They planner. don't need to go through that because they're not doing substantial changes. Is that what right, so it's not a site plan or anything like that. They don't need a DRT, but because of the work they were doing and the fact that it's quite a tight parking situation back there, it's a public lot, the police use it, etc. We had them come in for a pre-construction meeting, even though it's only interior work. We felt the need to talk to them and express our needs as well. I was out that day, so I did not get any notes or minutes either, so I'm not, I know it wasn't the time's that most favorable position of a Dollar Tree going in there, but. <laughs> so your comment, your very first comment, I guess I, I want to make sure that I understood what you were saying is that that wi the the thing that looks like a window mm -hmm. um, is not a it we're, it's not considered a window, um, right. and so therefore the sign would be considered that sign would be considered in compliance because it's below the top of the eave and not above the top of the bottom of the second so, floor window. Right. Yeah. Yes. yes. Correct. It's not above the roof either. Right. Right. Because essentially that's the only place to put it, <laughs> right. put a sign, and it was designed for that anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, but the original developer had promised a much nicer background, and they didn't put it in. Mm -hmm. They just put in the block. And that's where I'm concerned. Is promises kept and promises not kept? That's a long time ago. This is what we have stone. Right. right, and so, so we don't have language that has consequences for making changes that are not approved. How do we? Well, this is just for a site. So this is just for a sign permit. And so as long as that's all this says, yeah. mm -hmm. then that's all they can do. Right. Mm -hmm. You'd have to get a permit from the building inspector to make a change for something else, and then you know, you'd see it. Mm -hmm. Right, which is what I'm just yeah. Yeah. Is there any other location for a sign? Is there anything on? I believe there's been some area, well, again, when they first came, they had proposed some areas on the back here as well, but because we don't allow more than one wall sign or freestanding sign, they weren't allowed to do that by right. They did not want to go for the variance or anything like that, so that's why they came back with this. Yeah more conform to our bylaw. they allowed two signs per single business? business. Yeah. Single tenant. Multi tenant building with with frontage on a, a parking lot is is what Northern Bank has for example, right? Yeah. In most zones we allow only one wall mounted or freestanding sign. You cannot have both or more than one of the same. Um, business B, right? Business A. No, business B, you're right, sorry. I'm not advocating for a same sign, although I just, <laughs> Burger King just want to make sure that. Yeah. What? Right now. Burger King is in the middle of the yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. Is that why? It's, I was just driving here and I was like, what is going on with the other side? Four signs. Huh? Well, they don't have anything on the building. 
and they no. only have one side right. to the freestanding well, side. Well, that's getting repaired, apparently. Okay. That's, that that side is not confirmed. Let's not talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was, no, was going to ask you about it when we <laughs> What is going on? But I don't know, the way I read this, maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. Business B, wall mounted no, to per business. Hey, do you see that it's a. It's I, I, the menu thing. I don't know how to get things. There's a way to get them, but I don't know how to find it. So I have to start over. Sorry. Because <laughs> I. Right. What? Where were you looking? That's in the Eight. table. Table, yeah. 8.3. 8.6. Page 81. Oh, maybe I'm in the wrong section here. 859. No. Yeah, right. Table 8.6. Page 81. Well, my first table eight two three says two signs per two business. business. Hmm. And then again, not advocating for another sign, but Sounds right. Like right but, but if you're in the back. I mean, this this building screams that you've got to have one in the front, the front entrance, and then one sign at the back, at the right. back en at entrance that fronts on the the town parking lot, mm -hmm. just like what was happening at Northern Bank, where you have a sign in the back on mm -hmm. the on the parking lot, the town parking lot, mm -hmm. and it's not in the front. So, I'm not sure this is any different. Do we have any historical photos of what Walgreens had? I do not. Um, I was only told and made aware that the Walgreens sign was in the exact same place as this Dollar Tree sign. Yeah. And I was not told they had anything in the back. So. There's two signs, right? No. Let's not push it. What so, they want to say right, in, right. Right. In, and if you recall, um, I, I think I remember part of the discussion in looking at one sign versus two signs is one is two wall signs if they're on different faces right we had talked about that but only one freestanding so to sort of get away from this freestanding lollipop signs up and down everywhere um, much rather have the wall mounted signs sure so I think that's where we ended up okay. well it's definitely where <laughs> from my review of this, I, I guess it is what it is. I, I, don't, I don't see any issues. Could be worse. But I don't see any issues with the sign per se. Mm -hmm. There we go. That got worse. <laughs> my stomach is. Anyone comments? Are you joking? Lots of people care about this. They're not here. Yes. Correct. I just checked to see why they're not here, but they're not here. There's a lot of people that care about this. And yeah, it's just us. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'm. We're talking about zoning later, but you know, in the record, I'd like to just say that I think Reading needs to look into something that you know, understands the placement of stores like this, being at the crossroads mm -hmm. of our town and having us represented by Dollar Tree is not. I, I guess I, I'll say, look at every single town. Up, look at every town. They've got two or three of them. I mean, it's, we're not. But it's not, not at the it's, crossroads of the actual entrance to, to our main <clears throat> area. I mean. So, right, we're, we're not. As a town, we're not in control of that, right? Um, uh, what we what we are in control of is um, uh, what types of 
um, businesses can go on, go in, right? Retail, mm -hmm. restaurant, that sort of thing. And at, at one point, we decided that it was appropriate for retail to go in here, whether it's Dollar Tree, Dollar General, whether it's you know some high-end jewelry store. It, it's all the market. If we want, right? I, I think if we want higher-end stores than Dollar General in here, then as a town, we should it's spend more money in town and not go to shop local. not go. Yeah, you oh, shop local and you make you make Reading a, a you know a, a higher-end location for retail. Or if that's what the we want. property owners. I, I don't know, right? We Couldn't can't control. This. We can't but control owner, the market. But you can't. I mean, and I and I'm not going to use this as it's a terrible mm. example. But in in Nantucket, like <clears throat> they have prohibitions against national chains. It doesn't work. You know, you can't have. Therefore, the the residents, you know, full time residents don't have a CVS as a result of that. But they do have prohibitions on types of stores in order to. You know, have a, and and it's we talk here about having different tools yeah, that we have as available. I don't know. Why. I don't know. I don't know what they are, and that's what I'm challenging us mm -hmm. in terms of thinking about it's tools. Historic district based stuff, on locations, right? correct? And that's what I'm talking. You know, you can't yeah. make a, a a huge swath and say no, like Nantucket did, because it makes no sense for the economic development. But you certainly can take a, a location like this one and say, this is not the right use for that site. It's just, and, and I'm saying this because I have, you know, I know that we're not spending locally, but retail is contagious. It is a contagious type of situation. So we now have our lovely CBD store and we have a Dollar General here. And so there's a tipping point at which we want to watch and take the and I you know I'm going to use all of the blunt words that I don't like being said in our meetings but we don't want a tipping point that doesn't represent the character of the town that we want to live in I agree and the, the fact that Ball Green's you know, subsidiary business let this thing sit for five years and is now putting this in is a tragedy for our town it's, and I'm going to use that word it's a tragedy for our town um, I am glad that we will have feet on the street based on the buildings that are coming together that may bring restaurants and smaller businesses back. But it's going to need some watching and, mm -hmm. you know, if we can look into tools, we but should. I think that falls in line with, with your feeling, rightly or wrongly, about the Haven Street area that is now medical and not restaurants, the podiatrist and the dentist and so on. And it's it's in the same category of how can we legislate what goes into a business? Is it is it up to the town? The problem, you know, so it, it, it does. It comes down to, I mean, you get the luxury so, of being able to regulate demand if you have enough demand. And we I, don't have enough I, demand. I, I don't, you don't have I, enough I, demand. Yeah. Right. I, I, I like the conversation, but <laughs> let's bring it back to the sign. And I, I completely get where you're, I mean, I just, where you you're know, this is the opportunity yeah. to say something super clearly I, I, yes, about this. Yes, and uh, I get that. And we're talking about zoning later, too. Yeah. So let's get back to the sign. Sorry. <laughs> um, Particular issues on the sign. Did you clarify the LED, not LED yeah, question? It's in here several, um, in several places. It will be written on the building permit as well. I understand, but why do you use an LED letter when it's not an LED sign? It's just, is that the, the most available it comes letter? from a chain that yeah. it's what they manufacture. Okay. Yeah. And, and so again, kind of on the creep, do we have to like double check that there's no light bulbs back behind it, or uh, not for 2,500 bucks? There isn't. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 And um, there's no, there shouldn't be any power actually to the original sign either because of the pen, right. mm -hmm. the gooseneck. Sorry. So there's just no power there. They'd have to get a permit. Well, they should get a permit to run electrical to it. If they were going to right. But since they're not. 
discuss that. That's a sign I have no objection. Right. Other than it's curious that the color green is called green envy. <laughs> <laughs> And call it green right. or something. Yeah. No, that's what it's called. It's called green envy. So, were there any amendments? I, I don't, I don't, no don't believe so. My only now concern is <coughs> the art language you mentioned before. Well, right, you wrote, which you wrote in, here that no window signs are approved here. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's not what you're talking about, though. You were talking about behind the window sign. The, is it the murals yeah. that were painted over? I don't over know what their plan is for it. If they paint it over, then they have a plan for doing something. I haven't seen the, the site plan. I haven't seen the plans, so I need staff to keep an eye on it and figure mm -hmm. out what's going on. Yep. If they're going to open it up to the store, that's better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I I, 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 right. There right. were conditions with that use at that location. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, what they're trying to do is fall under that same use that was approved, and mm -hmm. therefore they need to they need to comply with those same conditions. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm pretty sure there were conditions related to those those windows and and what and how they're blocked up and what they were allowed to do right. um, once they blocked them up. So okay. I'd advise that you pull that out. And if yep. you plan on doing something that isn't in compliance with that, then yep. you know. Yep. Then, mm -hmm. It's in your hands. You got it. Mm -hmm. No, no green painting. No green got it. Painting. Mm -hmm. Yep. No green painting. No, so we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> do we have a motion? Uh, motion to approve sign permit application. Master signage plan for five Hardenin Street Dollar Tree has written. Is this a master signage plan? No, just a certificate. So, oh, sorry, yeah. I see. Yeah. I'll change that to sign application. Sign application. Now we can say it as amended. So. <laughs> <laughs> as amended. Motion to approve sign permit application for 5 Hardenin Street, Dollar Tree, as amended. Sorry, second. Second. All those in favor? Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yep, you're good. Um, we'll stamp your drawings and I'll edit this and post it with the town clerk and send it your way tomorrow. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Yes. Fine to keep going for the moment. Mm -hmm. All right, next item on the agenda um, now is 116 uh, West Street for a continued public hearing. May I? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Let's keep going. Good evening. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Latham here tonight on behalf of Robert and Michelle Biggio. This is our continued hearing from the March 11th meeting that we had. You would continue this um, that night to the April date. Uh, we requested a continuance from that date because we had some additional work to do. Um, the reasons for those continuances, as you may recall, uh, first we had some plan revisions to make based on your comments and some feedback from the audience. Uh, we also had to complete test pits to substantiate the drainage design that we'd uh, proposed. Uh, we're also going to investigate some wetlands concerns that were raised um, from abutters. And finally, uh, we were waiting engineering and fire department inputs. Uh, I do plan to turn over to Steve Fleming, our engineer, to address the plan revisions and to discuss the test pits. Uh, but to quickly highlight the other items, we did engage a wetland scientist who visited the site on March 25th and again with Chuck Taroni conservation agent on April 1st. At that time they observed soils and, and did a full site evaluation uh, and conservation has concluded there are no wetland resource areas on site. Uh, there was a full memo submitted by our wetland scientist to, to conservation as well which uh, the conservation agent uh, agrees with. Uh, with regards to engineering, uh, Ryan Percival has submitted a memo wherein he agrees that the waivers um, from an engineering perspective makes sense and agreeing that the drainage design uh, also is approved from an engineering perspective. And finally, with regards to the fire department, uh, they have no objection. They don't technically have jurisdiction given the length of the roadway for this uh, single family home that we're proposing. 
Um, but within their DRT notes, they had suggested a 14-foot uh, roadway, which is what we are proposing today. So if I may turn it over to Steve Fleming, our engineer. I'm Steve Fleming from Vineyard Engineering and Environmental Services. Uh, we made some revisions to the plans based on most of the comments that were made uh, during the last meeting. Um, the comments were largely focused on the drainage issues, but we did make changes to the plans um, based on some of the information that we have obtained from the test pits and from the percolation tests. We had a geotechnical engineer um, make quick work. Three of the test pits were done in the mid area of the driveway to ensure that the 14-foot um, driveway, the subsurface, would be able to support a fire engine. Uh, the geotechnical report was submitted to um, Brian Percival, the town engineer, for his review. But uh, the subsurface conditions were acceptable. Uh, we're going to be doing permeable pavement. We were talking to um, uh, Mr. Percival about this, the construction of the road, and he um, explained what he would like to see for the permeable pavement and the substrata. We added that as a um, detail to our detail sheet. Uh, it's a standard approach and uh, we also raised the elevation of the driveway so that we could raise the house a little bit further. When the wetland scientist went out to the rear part of the yard, <coughs> he felt that there was maybe a high groundwater table of possibly as low as, as, as shallow as two feet, three feet. So in light of that, we moved the house up a couple feet, uh, the basement elevation and the garage elevation went up as well. So we had to uh, increase the elevation of the driveway so that it would, would go out. Everything is essentially the same as far as the contours. Everything flows towards the southwest portion of the property. Um, that was the area that the um, drainage cover um, infiltration galleries were situated originally. Based on the wetlands information, we chose to do our test pits and move things to the front where it's a higher elevation. What we did was we did two percolation tests, one uh, in, in, in two of the three areas where we proposed drainage. Those percolation tests showed um, infiltration of less than two minutes per inch. The soils were really good. We went into the um, most restrictive layer and found out that the perk rates were really good. Groundwater was at nine feet. It gave us a lot of flexibility. We moved everything out front. Um, in light of all the complaints and the concerns about drainage, and the, you know we heard that um, mostly during the meeting, uh, instead of just <laughs> designing for the 900 for the increased impermeable area, what we did was we increased uh, we took it for 100 percent of the house, and which is a little over 2,000 square feet, and we also took. Um, the owner said that we would make, we would, he would be willing to take the original house and um, do some infiltration over there. There isn't a lot of area that we can work with, but we took the back of the carriage house and we assumed the same perk rate for the same elevation soils. We should be fine. We did five test pits out front and we found similar soils in all the test pits. We expect the same elevation to have roughly the same soil constituents. We'll validate it when we go to put them in. We couldn't get the backhoe back in there because of um, spatial constraints, but we're, we're not concerned. We actually doubled the size of the infiltrators for the back roof of the carriage house. It would only require one, but we added two just because we're going to be back there making the effort anyways. We thought that, um, and we weren't, we weren't able to do a test pit, so we just doubled the size of it. It's not a huge expense to double the size of it. Um, so in all, um, we also added a snow storage area, which was brought up during the meeting, and we increased uh, the size of the swale um, to capture a lot of the water. Should the permeable pavement fail or be frozen, and then we get a thaw, um, everything is pitched towards that swale. Uh, we're not concerned that we're going to lose water to the street because at the street, the pitch actually goes upward. Uh, about a one percent. I mean, on the on the north side, uh, the northeast side, we're dealing with the original <coughs> grade, so it's a little bit higher. But on the south side, the midpoints, we're actually heading up towards the street. Um, but drainage was our biggest concern, and I feel like we've done um, 
as much as we could possibly do and um, with the access the original home um, really binds up the property so there's not a lot we can do north or, or east of the house or the original house and the south and west side of the house is is largely developed already with stone walls that we didn't want to disturb the other things that were added to the plan were some dimensions um, everybody wanted to know what the driveway with the street was and we had, we identified that as 24 feet it's actually just slightly less than 24 feet and um, we also moved the turnaround a little bit further away from the house um, at the beginning I think our turnaround was right so that you could actually back out of the driveway and turn but I think there was a concern that it was too close to the house in the event that there was a fire and they wanted that extra room it's a little bit too close to the house to fight a fire and um, have extra apparatus there other other plans other planned edits um, probably not as um, <coughs> <coughs> on the um, site plan we removed the trees and the house mm -hmm. because it's only the subdivision plan on the other plans we removed a lot of the bushes that were not required to be on the plan it was um, we were inundated with bushes this is the existing conditions plan mm -hmm. and we've identified on that plan where trees are going to be removed um, there was a question about landscape and what we intended to do with landscape and the owner added a plan or an edit to our uh, plan which was um, the January 17th plan showing the Abruvites so it, it may be that the um, the Abruvites that, that plan was added to us it's, it's I think it says plan two of seven but it's actually just an add-on at the end which um, we're, we're fine with the Abravides, but we wanted to present it to get feedback on this meeting. I guess just to conclude our, our portion of the presentation, we, we submitted an updated list of waivers, uh, the updated plans, the updated um, stormwater design management system. And with that, we would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Is the letter from the engineer included in the package? I don't believe I gave you a hard copy. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I have it right now. I'm mixing it up with the other one. I have multiple copies if you'd like to inspect them. Oh, thank you. Thanks. So, uh, I, just so that I understand, um, right? I see these. They're the the Caltech um, units back behind the. I think that's uh, right back behind the shed, the existing building. Carriage house. Yeah. Exactly, yes. um, it, but you mentioned, um, I guess, you had mentioned that when you went out with the with the. Um, uh, coming from conservation commission or some the, there's an indication that maybe the groundwater was was like two feet two, um, is it is it back along that line or that that was the case or is it further along the western like where where on the site were, was that the the wetland scientist did most of his test pinning out here at the lower elevations okay uh, where we're doing our test pits out in this area, which is about six feet higher in elevation. All right. He did. I think he did about 12 to 14 test holes. Uh, he didn't find any hydric soils. He found some soils that were, you know, possibly more organic than the rest of them, but nothing hydric soils, okay. nothing that met the qualification. And we didn't see any free water in any of the holes. The test pits that we did 
we found it consistently at nine feet below grade and the groundwater came in fairly well at that same depth throughout that elevation. And the soils were consistent throughout um, in every test pit. We did five test pits, three for geotechnical <coughs> purposes and two for drainage purposes, mm -hmm. and every single one of them were the same. We did a perk test in the most restrictive layer. Uh, the layers down below may even perk quicker. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful yeah. material. So you're saying it was around almost nine feet below, say, 272 or so? Um, I think, yes, I believe um, it's on the test pit logs. Yeah. The test pits were all done within, within two to three feet of each other. Within two to three feet of depth? Within elevation. Oh, okay. Elevation was probably about two feet maybe within a foot and a half of itself. I, I'd have to take a look yeah. and see where it was specifically. But um, The geotechnical tests didn't go down as deep because they didn't need to do that. So the three in the driveway area didn't go down to the groundwater table. It was the other two. I think maybe one of them may have gone down that deep. I'm not quite but that's around four feet higher than the low point. It looks like the two footprints there on the eastern. <laughs> Originally, you had the Caltex out back there. It, they were at about 272 to 273 feet by elevation, test fits one and two. And it's about 268 out back. So it's between four and five feet higher in elevation. So I know the math is a little bit fuzzy because two to three feet below 268 is not the same math when you're going from 272 to 273 and you go down nine feet. So it'll be a little bit different, but it was a consistent down the table in the two of them. Yeah, I had some came to a memo last <coughs> I think it would have conveyed it to you. I was just thinking that should have planned you should plan to do more than what's the minimum required so I'm trying to understand the sort of percentage more and accommodating your development right mm -hmm. if I'm correct I think that's part of the reason we were trying to capture from the existing house as well because currently that's not captured at all so I know that we were doing we did convey that and I know that Steve spoke with Ryan Percival as well mm -hmm. to talk about what, what to look for and how to address that. We also have the permeable pavement with, a, with an area underneath that pavement that is going to be stone. It's going to contain a lot of water. The other thing is that we have the swale, which has also taken a lot of the runoff. So we're not only just m doing our own house and part of the carriage house, which actually is more than being done right now, but we're taking the driveway, which is permeable pavement, and we're bringing that into the swale as well. That swale is in an area where it's going to perk about two inches as well, two minutes per inch as well. So we're really managing a lot more water um, than is being managed currently. And we're removing patios and other impermeable areas. So our net increase in impervious area is only 900, a little over 900 square feet, less than 1,000 square feet. So what you're suggesting is that the improvement, the, the changes that you're making, you look at that plan there, I guess. You split that property right in half, north south, today. Here, right? Because here's where it starts to come back down. So right here. 
you're saying that you're taking all of this water that was making its way back here? No, no, that's not what we're, not, that's not it, I'm sorry if I'm confusing the issue. What we did is we took the carriage house and we just took the back shed area and moved it out. We would only need one Caltech recharger to handle that water. But what we just did is we took all the water that's running across. If it comes onto the driveway, it's going to go into our drainage swale. Right, but what's it doing manage. now? Right now, everything goes in this direction. Everything naturally goes in this direction. We've actually had, we haven't changed the direction of groundwater flow. I know this The cover sheet's wrong. <laughs> wrong site. Um, anyways, I guess I'm trying to dumb it down so that we can all understand exactly how much water we're trying to mitigate. And here's why, as I wrote in my memo to you, is that in exchange for granting, possibly granting these waivers, you know, you should contribute something, right? You're going to develop this property and, and you're allowed to. Um, but I just felt that if we were going to give you these waivers, grant you these waivers, you're going to save a lot of money on that construction. So you could afford to increase the number of Caltex and the drainage systems to try and help make the rest of the problem <coughs> a little bit better. Right? It's sort of an investment in that neighborhood. It's not your problem. You didn't create it, but you're in there now. So as a benefit of being allowed to develop the way you want to here with the waivers, you should try to help out with some of those water problems that we're experiencing back here. So I'm trying to understand, because now that you moved it away from that, that hole there on the west, right? It's still lower. This is still four feet lower. Mm -hmm. It's actually 68, so it's what? 72, 73? Five feet lower. You know, this is still all going this way. Mm -hmm. And that water table is only four feet below this, so this is probably wet. So if we could kind of suck up whatever's happening here, we can start to mitigate some of the problems that are happening on these edges. That's what I was trying to get at. Because originally you were, you were back there with your Caltex. I figured if you increase the size of those, you could suck up some of that water. But now you're not back there. Well, the reason we're not back there is because we don't have the freeboard between the bottom of the Caltex yeah. and the mm -hmm. top of the water table. Uh, they like to have two feet, which means that we would have to raise the grade back there, which is also a problem. Okay. So we really don't want to raise the grade because then we lose all that storage value of what's actually collecting out there. But our plan will not exacerbate site conditions outside of our property. We're still going to have <coughs> run water running off onto the property from ne neighbors' properties, but we're not adding to it at all. In fact, we're adding less to it than it's already occurring right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. yeah, and I, I can appreciate that. But what I was getting at was not just that you're not making it worse, that you're actually making it better. So now, I understand you can't get the Caltex back there because they, they won't function right. properly. Which is... They'll be flooded. Yeah. yeah, which sort of makes sense from right. what a lot of what we heard from mm -hmm. the neighborhood. Um, yeah. Right, that all sort of makes sense now. Sure. Right? And, so. and, the, so, yeah. and the soils aren't as... Um, mm -hmm. uh, they're not as porous back there, you know. There is more loam. They're mm -hmm. not gonna. F it's not gonna have infiltration back there. That's probably another part of the problem. But we are reducing the amount of runoff to that area, and we're gonna take that. The swale that we have is over designed for the roadway. So anything that makes it across the roadway is gonna go into our swale, and anything that actually hits the roadway is going to percolate through the roadway. If you look at the detail, there's quite a bit of porous material in that driveway. Uh, that driveway is going to be a, a, an infiltration chamber on its own. It's going to be dry unless it's frozen and then there's a massive thaw. But if there is a massive thaw, we've got a storage in that swale, enough storage to handle the driveway and then some. You know, The problem with the house is, you know, we would, you know, we considered infiltrating around the house. And, you know, unfortunately, this part of the house, I know you can see this dark line. That's all beautiful patios and, and walls. It <laughs> adds to the character of the house. If we dig into it, we're going to destroy that character. And, and in this area, it is paved. 
we, we could actually add something here, but I doubled it here so that we could actually take more back there. If we could get equipment back here, and it is going to be difficult if we did it, we wouldn't be opposed to infiltrating some of this, but this really isn't making it across into that backyard anyways. Mm -hmm. This is infiltrating. Everything up at this height is probably going to be the same soil type, and it's probably all going to infiltrate. Um, our biggest problem in that backyard is not what's coming across our property, it's what's coming into our property from the neighbor's property. And we're not proposing to do anything with that, we're proposing to accept it. So if I could, uh, Robert Biggio, the owner of the property. Oh, sorry, yes. Um, I had suggested. I suggest the digital cultic in the back of the carriage house. You know, I haven't lived in the house for many years. This driveway slopes in this direction, so most of the water <coughs> uh, runs down the driveway. Um, but this is a large roof area, and so there is water that, that flows down this direction, so I thought that, that would, adding that would, would help with the, the water situation in the, in the back of the yard. We would add more cultic recharges, but we just have to bring the gutters and bring the water over to it. At some point, it becomes impractical to bring water there from the front of the house. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know that, you know, um, the applicants aren't opposed to putting more cultic recharges around the house. Uh, we know it will perk. Uh, I just don't know if the, there's enough value in it to disturb that part of the property. given that we have the swale. I guess the way I'm looking at this, Nick, and maybe is that really the, the area now that's sort of draining into, into this is, is really, um, right, it's, it, it, would, it would be this area right here, right? that's coming in here all of this really is either getting intercepted by the the drive um or going into the swale already um and then you know then you have that the house there sort of in the way and then that goes into that so there's not a whole lot there that that they're, they it seems like they're cutting off a lot of the drainage that used to make its way into there. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, right, because they, they, with that water table, there's not much else you can, you can do there to make that situation better. Right, I mean, it, the, well, the, the best the thing you can do is allow Al allow more of the drainage from the other, yes. from the runoff from the other um, uh, properties into that enough capacity, I, I guess. I mean. We've increased it. You know, our system, our mm. our plans are robust based on the neighbors' concerns. I mean, this is a really a robust approach <laughs> to handling the drainage. Um, we could go further, and uh, one of my first thoughts was when I, I heard your comment about increasing it so that we can get the waivers and I said that's great um, but my concern was where will we get all the water to be so robust you know and we've got the permeable paved driveway which is a huge infiltration gallery as it is and then we have the drainage swale which I did increase so we could handle that and um, but the house, you can only take so much water from the house. It's not going to shed any more water than it already is, than the square footage of what it already is. So the only thing that we could really do is dig into some of those planters around the house and um, possibly dig into the driveway in that alcove. But I don't think that there's enough water to really make that much of a significant difference. Um, None of that water is flowing that direction. It's going to come out to the driveway and be caught into our, it has to be caught in our um, swale. Everything is going from the swale. It pitches at the street, it pitches upward. Um, what about the snow storage? Is that going to impact that swale in winter? Uh, yes. It's going to take some of the capacity of that swale. Uh, where we had to put snow somewhere, <laughs> and we're assuming that if we have snow, we're not going to have runoff. Eventually the snow will melt and it's going to be right in the swale where it should be. 
if we have a massive melt, um, you know, we're going to have water problems. We're going to have water problems in low areas everywhere. Uh, we, we've, I think, even if we do have a massive melt, the swale is over-designed and it should handle it. It just may take a little bit more time to percolate. We might have a skating rink right there before it, it might freeze over before it actually perks. But my guess is that it's going to be um, a fairly dry area, even with the snow storage there. Um, during winter time, um, you know, uh, Mr. Percival asked us to prepare for a melt and prepare for um, uh, failure in maintenance, operation and maintenance, which we, we also added to our plan. And this is how we've prepared. We've overcompensated with that swale. If that swale is flooded on some days, then it means that the operation and maintenance hasn't been done. Okay. Uh, and in the wintertime, if things freeze and thaw, we're prepared for that. If we have a massive amount of snow, s snow like, the, like the blizzards of March that we have, and then it thaws pretty quickly. I think that that, that that swale should handle all of it. Okay, other questions? Comments? This, is, <coughs> this isn't based on the plan here, but um, Landscaping, does that include also the frontage to West Street in front of the current historical house? So we, we haven't done a full landscaping plan yet. We simply just did screening uh, around the premier at this time. Okay. The, the landscaping we'll, plan has largely been designed for screening purposes only at this, at this we'll, stage. We'll be going back to the Historic District Commission with the design of the, the house and the the exterior features and plantings. Yeah, that's pretty much around the perimeter. Okay. I just, there was a discussion of what was going to get taken out and what was being put in, and I couldn't. Yeah, so everything in the clouds will be taken out. So may I ask, being a neophyte with this, is there any ledge that you have found on property? So no blasting requirements? No blasting. We didn't find anything but um, really good soils and not test pits. Um, waivers. Sure. If memory serves me correct. We, we went. We went through these before, yeah. right? Each of them, not in terms of. Um, uh, specifics, but at least identifying um, all the waivers that were being requested. Um, And I guess, uh, right, a lot of these waivers relate to the plan set. Are we, um, sorry, are we supposed to go through all the documentation or are we allowed, are we at a point where we can ask questions? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Oh, can yeah. I, yeah. Okay, great, sorry. We're just trying to be respectful yeah, no, of the process. Go ahead. Yep. So I think I heard a lot of. Oh, just, sorry. Did you? Yeah, go ahead. So if you can, <laughs> um, if, before you speak, if you can, um, uh, your name oh, and, sure. and, um, uh, and address. Uh, Dan and Lauren Ryan, 17 Wentworth Road. All right. So I heard a lot of, um, I guess I'm happy that there were some test bits done. I am a little bit curious as to, I heard that the, um, there was a, a wetlands tech as well. So they went along the west side of the property. I was just curious to see why there wasn't any test bits done over in that area, but we did hear that the water table is approximately two feet, which we can definitely attest to. 
where one of the neighbors obviously have had water issues. So uh, hearing a lot, you know, it looks like more or less the east side, you know, north side is taken care of. And I think going back to your point, Mrs. Safina, of what are we going to be doing about the west portion of this, I really haven't heard anything that has given me any comfort whatsoever that we're not going to be having some major uh, water issues, which we've encountered in the past. In fact, not only are there not uh, you know pieces in place that I've seen, we've actually had call tags now that have been taken out of the west side altogether and brought up to the north side to the old to the uh, existing house. So if anything, in my opinion, it seems like it's getting worse. Um, I, I would still say that I have some pretty significant concerns about, about water on the west side. Yeah, and I'm Lauren, 17 Wentworth. Um, I'll fully admit I was not thrilled at first, but I've come to terms with the structure. I am very concerned about water. Um, we have standing water. We have mold in places where we should have grass. Um, I'm not sure what the comment was about other properties draining in. Um, we certainly don't have, and we're not adding any water anywhere. Um, and, you know, to echo my husband's comment, I mean, we've focused on the driveway, which is great. That's nowhere near our property line. Um, we focused on, you know, the test pits that are up nowhere near our property line. I mean, we just want to make sure our basement's not going to flood. That's all we're asking for. And I, it's getting worse. You're moving all of the structures to, to get the water away from our property line. And I'm sorry, sir, I sincerely, I, I um, can't remember your name. S Steve Fleming. Steve Fleming. Steve, you, I literally have been writing down what you've been saying. You have said we've done as much as we can possibly do. My guess is we could have a major problem if, like those are not super reassuring words to a homeowner who like has, works and saved to live in a town and is really proud to be a resident of this town and doesn't want to have to move because their newly finished basement is flooding. I don't think, like, that's all I'm asking, is that my property not be negatively impacted. Okay. To piggyback to that sure. point, our next door neighbors. <laughs> we are Ashley the Adriani of 13 Wentworth Road, and we feel like we've done a lot to mitigate the water on our own property we have a sump pump we have a French drain um, you know like we're not sure what other precautions we could take at this point to protect ourselves and you know we moved to this property four years ago and we've seen the damage or the water you know what's possible and we're just really afraid of what could come Andrew Heaney and we're I think 158 in the bottom left um, I appreciate the efforts to try to make things better for us in granting some of the waivers to see what you can do to improve. But what I've heard, I think, is that in that area, there's nothing you can do, which it is what it is, uh, except uh, stop, I guess, the location of the new home. Uh, all of that water that um, gathers on the top of that house or is now all the permeable land that's lost from the new structure is in that back area and is going to flow back. So we've now lost, and I know the net is only 900 square feet, but that may be across the whole property, not in the back west corner where we may have lost the most uh, permeable land. Uh, and there's nothing you can do just because of those conditions and situation with the uh, water table. Unless there is something that we haven't heard, but I haven't heard anything yet. So again, our concern. Thank you. Um, I, I'll, I'll explain what I think is going on from my sort of um, perspective, <laughs> layman's perspective, right here, and, I, and, and correct me if, if I'm saying something wrong or, or if you have a different perspective um, or if you, you all have a different pr pr perspective. So right here, what I see is right here, that's a 268 contour that runs like that, right? And then you have the 270 contour that runs along the edge there. And then I think, right, is this, is, is that, I can't, I can't read it, but I think those might be. Those are hedges. Deep. Okay. So to me, what's going on on this site is that, the, that um, it gradually drains in from, right, your, your properties around, well, at least, right, around here, it gradually drains in to that area. 
right? And so that's on what we don't have is the contours outside of this property, which which my guess is based on what we've heard from all the neighbors is these contours then probably are pretty flat or even probably drained towards your house. So so there there may be a, like a little bit of a ridge, probably not very visible, but. Um, but a little bit of a ridge around the perimeter of this of this property. What what I know I was concerned about before was the previous plan had those cultex, you know, and had a lot of work um, uh, right sort of in the middle of of this area, which would certainly imp right. You you put more dirt, right, you put more dirt. You put more things in there, and that's going to even though the cultex are supposed to. Um, uh, create infiltration. You're, you're disturbing this whole area and going to uh, displace it, its ability to um, to accommodate more water. What I hear them doing now is keeping, uh, you know, moving all of that disturbance onto the higher ground. And and um, uh, sort of uh, what I was what I was at before. Yeah, if you can. Um, and trying to intercept it before it gets into that area that's low, right? And so if they keep all of, I'm going to say, their water um, away from this this area, there's certainly probably some that that go into that that leaves more space, more capacity of this area for the water that's near your homes to to use that and it'll settle down into that area. That, I, Nick, I don't know. I mean, that's the way that I understand of, of what's going on. Um, we're probably, um, I, n knowing what the different water tables are, um, I'm, I wouldn't, I, I don't, I'm not so sure there's any way that they can um, make changes on this site that will create drainage improvements off this site, right? So onto your, mm -hmm. onto your properties, which is what, what I, you know, Nick was trying to get at before is let's make sure that you, that, that this development not only mitigates what, what's on here, but sort of makes improvements um, uh, for the whole neighborhood. And, and from what I see best, because of this, and that is, they're keeping every all the development out of that area, all the um, that um, that's keeping that water away from there. Yeah. I think that's the best that can be done. That's my layman's, layman's understanding of the yeah, situation. No, I, I totally understand exactly what you're saying in terms of trying to intercept it there. Yeah. So you, in theory, you take away 50%, 60 whatever percent, so that it, you know you, you limit the amount that's going to be getting over. Yeah. But what I'm also hearing is, well, like, well, we we can't do it because of the water table is so high over there as well. We can't put it in one of those cultex. It'd be pointless, right? So, so nothing. It is what it is. Nothing can be done. So. Where where am I gonna go next step? Should this create an issue for my house? Where do I go? You know what I mean? You literally just said this is the best we can do based on the circumstances. Looks like page seventy crosses Wentworth. Right. On the on their property. Right. Right. I, I think yeah. I can add to this. You know, there's water problems in that area, and there's water problems with your house, where we're actually. Mm -hmm. We're actually grateful that you brought them up and we're sympathetic to you. But there's, we can't change the water problems at your property, but we're not going to add to them. What we're just doing, my client is making a significant investment. Yep. His basement elevation is the same elevation as this back area. Now, if we're smart, we're going to put a little bit of a lip there because we know that there's water problems. He doesn't want this property to flood any more than he wants yours to flood. So everything we're doing, the way we're looking at this is that if we have 100% of the water coming down there now, we're going to have a lower percentage of the water based on our development afterwards. So we're not trying to fix, we can't fix the problems at your house, but we're not going to uh, add. I'm not asking we, you to we fix don't want you to fix. We, we understand that. But you know what, what I'm trying to say is I'm, I'm trying to, 
limit what we're capable of doing and make no promises. We're just not going to exacerbate site conditions at your property. We're not asking you to fix existing. We okay. just don't want it to be worse. That's our only concern. And I mean, we can shoot pictures of where it's within inches of our home, and that's yeah. before another the all of the side. removal of all of these trees and another on the um, east on foundation. the east side. You're saying um, that the water comes up on the east side of the house. Oh, I don't know the it direction. Comes, the, the west <laughs> side of this plan. It comes up. Can I stand up? This plan yeah, side of your house. Yeah, so plan this side is, east. This is my home. Yeah. It comes all the way this way. Yeah, plan east. And it goes this way, and it goes this way. So it goes into Andrew and Ashley's so yard, it goes up. into our yard, yeah, and it goes up into It's not this actually yard. coming from there. Right. So, it, yeah. <laughs> it's, weird, it's weird. If you can see the contours, you'd, you'd be confused by it, too. Um, I'm not lying. <laughs> no, I'm only listening to the house in my basement. That's why I can okay. try. <laughs> I want to help. <laughs> um, so let's say the front of the properties are right here. This is uh, yep. Wentworth, I guess, right? That's Wentworth. Okay. Yeah. So 170 is on this side of the road, which means that the water is actually coming this way from the roadside past your house and wanting to go here. That's what I was trying to understand, um, right? And then the water from this side is coming this way, right? So when you see this thing starting to fill up, it's actually probably more coming from this side than from that side. But let's say it's coming equally from both sides, right? It's filling yeah. up and it's starting to creep up. Yeah. It's actually flowing this way, but it's starting to fill up and creep up. Yeah. What they're proposing is to take the water from this side and not send it there. Okay. Right. So, so now all good. we're dealing with is the half of the water that's on this side. So. But you also have less trees and another foundation to absorb. So how do I yeah, know they're that? The, they're sending their water that way. Okay, so, so that water is going matters. that way. Right. This water is coming this way, and we have a lot less material or soil and so forth to absorb it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to engineer this. You're going to have to talk to this, but uh, 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 this this uh this roadway and these caltechs are more porous than the soil, I guess, than it is now. That's the idea of the caltech. It's a big empty vault. So I'm comfortable that they're taking the water from the east side and not sending it back this way. I think that's an improvement. I would like to talk a little bit more about whether anything can be done on that backside. Now, they're saying that the Caltex won't work because the water table is so high. It's really not going to do anything more than what the soil is doing there now. I think that's what that's how they work, right? They're kind of problems. They will just take the water. They'll be flooded immediately. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mold instead of grass. Yeah, I love a lot of moss too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Part of I'm at the top of the hill and have mold <laughs> moss. Yeah. Again, having lived there for many years, I do think that the cold tech behind the carriage house will help considerably. It's a large roof area. Are you proposing a traditional house probably on this new lot? A nothing modern flat roof? Or no. no, traditional house. Howard. <laughs> um, so, so let's say the front half of that roof. Let's say the front half of that roof drains towards, towards the east, towards the collection system. Um, so you raised it, so you could run a French drain or something around that perimeter to collect the back side of the roof mm -hmm. and bring that yeah. around as well. We've sized it twice the size just in case construction allows us to do that. Okay. So we can do that and we'd like to do that. Um, you know, we're, we may be, cap be able to do that. Um, oh. How about you won't do that? <laughs> well, you know, we will do that, but there is a there's a big concrete pad right here. So, um, you know, oh, that it's possible. Oh, no, sorry, I'm talking about the new house. The new house, the new house. Oh, yeah. the new house yeah, yeah. to me house ensured that that has French drains to it. This whole house is going to drain out from here out to the front. But they're the concerned drain, on that that corner. Out here. Nope. No, no, I mean, let's assume that that roof is going to have a ridge line that runs parallel to the long dimension, right? For the most part, 
right? There might be some return gables and stuff on it. So the back side, the west side of that roof, everything's being brought forward. We're gonna collect Everything. One hundred percent has to be brought forward. But it wouldn't be a French drain because they would have to pump it up. So we have to use the gravity so we're coming from the roof down we're going to have to bring everything around we're going to have to have um flex hose to bring it all the way around the front to these two points okay so, so we are the, thinking 100 they're proposing not to let the house drain that way as well okay. so all that's left draining there now is soil <coughs> open surface so you know it should net better so that helps a lot um is there anything in place or that would prevent the future owners from putting on additions or altering whatever setup we have to mitigate the water? We have to come back here and to zoning. And this is all captured as part of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for an addition, what are they, actually, what are you allowed by right? I mean, You're allowed 25. All the setbacks and, and lot coverage. Mm -hmm. We would probably have to work on the re-drainage, re, re to re-engineer the drainage. Yeah, I think that's probably what's going to say save you <laughs> from an addition is that they would have to re-engineer they'd have to increase the um, drainage system right because you're being increasing the surface. they're getting it a permit based on what they have said is the pervious surface now yeah and we're really pushing the setbacks on this anyways I think we're, we, we've, we've got everything fitting right but to put an addition that would be meaningful probably not be likely Because you don't want to be in the pond. You don't want to be in the pond, and we can't. We don't want to be sitting on top of our Caltech recharges on the right. northeast side. I think they're proposing the biggest house that they could comfortably fit on there that's reasonable for the site. It probably won't get any bigger. What's it look like for a footprint? Do you know roughly what that plate is? So, uh, I think it's about two thousand two hundred or two thousand three hundred square feet. Is it? Twenty-seven hundred. Yeah, that's about feet? that's about what they're building around here. Twenty-seven hundred, I think. Um, I, I guess you know, I'm I'm not sure. Um definitely understand that there's water issues there in your um, in your backyards and, and in this site um, <coughs> what I see them proposing is um, appropriate for what they're doing um, not it won't necessarily solve your issues but it really should not make them um, not make them worse based on anything that I that I see um, it, and could could make them better because they're taking that that water out um, and providing more capacity um, in that that um, low spot by not having their water go into that. <coughs> um, will you still have water issues? Oh um, no, I, I have yeah, no, I have yeah, no yeah, disillusion yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. It's more. Of, I don't want but them to be worse. worse. Right. And if they do become worse, and now there's a house there and a drainage system that is not functioning the way that we all think it should or could, and I'm sitting there with a foot of water in my basement, who am I talking to? Um, um, well, you talk to you talk your to neighbor them <laughs> first, and well, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're required to submit an operations and maintenance plan for that system. Is, you know, how they're going to maintain it, who's going to maintain it, and I don't know. Does that include say? Does that include reports on it? Yes. Annual, <clears throat> annual reports. There's annual reports, annual reports on. I guess that they've done the maintenance to it. If you see significant problems, I guess you could bring it up to the town and say, "Is could you check on the system to see if it's working?" And then they would follow up with the landowner. You know, I just stress that the basement of this house is going to be about the same elevation as yours, so they're going to be eager to be sure that the drainage systems are working properly as well. <laughs> Did you have something? I'm sorry, interrupted you. Oh no. 
I, well, I guess my question was, they're going to submit the operations reports to you, or where would they just? To the town engineer. To the town, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, that happens every year? Yep. Right. Yep. 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 January 1st, yep. every year. And they're a public record. You can they're a public record. You can come in and look at them as well. It's not just riveting readings. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it might be posted. Do you post that stuff online? Do you know? I don't typically. I don't post them. everything. Yeah. Gets, everything. Gets <coughs> Yeah, so it is all public record. I don't know if it's posted online or not, but I will say because this is part of the homeowners association, it's actually an obligation of both lots. It's not just the new house, so it's actually tied together. It's more of a common obligation to maintain this system. Okay. And there is enforcement procedures within the homeowners covenant that the town can enforce this against them. Okay. That's good to know. Um, so looking at um, the waivers, a lot of these, um, a lot of waivers that they're asking for really um, have to do with the plan set um, specifically. I didn't think that I saw um, in, where did that go? Um, the waiver? Um, no, in uh, Ryan's memo. Um, that he was, is he okay with those? He was, and he was okay with the prior set of waivers, which we had requested remove some and add some. Like there was a waiver for wetlands when there are no wetlands, so they didn't need that oh, waiver. Oh, right, yes, and yep. Stuff. Um, And so he was okay with the waiver sort of as we went through right. them and said we don't really want that. Exactly. You don't need that. Okay. Um, I did speak <laughs> with him on this revised plan today and he had no issues. Yeah. Okay. Um, Did you get these in time to incorporate them into the decision? I did. I did that today. So if we're going to look at them, let's look at them as they're written in the decision. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure it's right. Um, and although I'm not all that anxious to go through one by one, I think we probably we probably need to. Um, you can vote on them all at once. If yeah. You First one requiring topography to be shown within 100, 100 feet uh, um, of the locus. That's a plan set issue. Um, and stop me if you want to um, discuss any particular item. Um, requires name, location, right of way, width, sideway, sidewalk location of streets to be offered to the town of Reading for acceptance. Um, they did provide details that state it would remain a private way. Okay. Um, requires a profile be created for each right of way. Um, rate is largely flat. That's the answer. Yes. And the engineer did review the detail on the driveway <coughs> and also had no concerns okay. with that detail. Um, requires a full traffic report or a study for one house that will be needed. Um, requires the location, layout, size um, of above and below ground utilities, including gas, ca uh, electric cable, and television, including proposed lighting. Spillings. The type of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They will all be installed below ground along the side of the driveway. So basically, the answer is because it's one house, right. that's not really mm -hmm. necessary. Um, requires an environmental impact report to be completed for the development. Um, that doesn't seem appropriate for a single um, adding one house. Um, Requires test borings be completed to determine that materials are suitable for roadway construction. 
Um, we did do subsurface investigation, just not yeah, we're test boring. Boring. Geotechnical engineer felt that the test pits would give a little bit more information, and uh, we had McPhail Associates um, oversee the test pits during the same day of the perk tests. Okay. We wrote a memo, and we sent that to uh, Mr. Percival. So is that specifically a waiver because the language says test borings? I didn't know whether we were just not figure in the abundance of caution just in case think about a different that. Meaning. We should we should probably change that language to say um, test borings or soil pits it's as acceptable to the town engineer. Mm -hmm. yeah, should look in a lot of these. Yeah, yeah. There's probably a lot of stuff. In there. <laughs> <laughs> um, requires electrical service and street lighting. Um, it's not going to be a street. So yeah. Right. Uh, requires that the width of the street right of way shall be 60 feet. Cul de sac terminations of street right of way shall consist of right of way circle. The radius is 60 feet. And so on. Um, and the proposal is for yeah, 15, 15 foot wide. 14, actually. I'm sorry. I read 14. I saw 14 and said 15. <laughs> um, but can I just be sure, because earlier in the decision we do say the lot plan shows a 100 foot long, 50 foot right of way layout, even though it's paper, and it's 50 feet. 32 and it's narrowest because of the weird shape that we have to that. Requires that changes in grade or vertical curves of streets be designed in accordance with AASHTO um, based on design speed of 30 miles an hour for secondary streets. That is <laughs> not appropriate here. <laughs> uh, requires a 30 foot minimum paved way. That's the <coughs> same issue about the 14 foot wide, wide paved way. Um, requires that an island be constructed with a maximum outside radius of 20 feet when a cul-de-sac is built. Um, and that is not the case here. So. Um, requires granite curbing um, to be installed. Just for the last two, I just want to double check that this is on west, is that what you are, you're at here? Yeah, granite curbing and uh, uh, requires sidewalks along the roadway. Right, so West Street itself has curbing and sidewalks, so I'm just double checking that that, and they're all brand new, so. Well, this is intended only for the driveway itself, instead okay. of doing That's why I wanted to double check it, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah typically this is about along the new road. Right. Mm -hmm. How come we don't have to do these for the other um, subdivisions? All of these waivers weren't part of the last two subdivisions. We just had the um, <clears throat> couple of these, not all of them. Um, um, Grove Street had almost copy and paste from almost 40. Everyone, yeah. Yeah. Almost everyone wants to get rid of the granite. Uh, the only time we let them do that is they're going to do some sort of low impact water mitigation. So if they want soft edges, they're trying to take that water into swales. Yeah, no, but like these, some of the right away, some of these. Waivers did not come up <coughs> some of the recent I'm thinking subdivisions. About the road in, uh, what's the development over on Franklin? Yeah. It's like five houses, though, right? Mm -hmm. Four or five houses. Yeah. So they did more. I see. So yeah. they didn't need a waiver for it. Yeah, they have yeah. a big cul de sac. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's as big as the maximum. Right. 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 But it's still larger than this. Okay. We did the island one. Oh. I don't think I've seen an island uh, <laughs> since I've been on the board. Yeah. Right. No, but we waved it quite a few times. We waved it all the time. We yeah. waved it all the time. <laughs> it's a maintenance yeah. yes. We don't want to yeah. plow around it. Understood. If we're going to accept the street, it's going to become public. We have to deal with it. Got it. And maintenance doesn't like them. Yeah. No. Okay. okay. Um. So, discussions on any of those waivers? No. Anything? No. Not appropriate. Uh, 
I'm okay with all of them. Um, questions on anything besides water? <laughs> Other than I don't want to see construction in the back of the house for. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All the We've come to terms with that. All the normal stuff. All right. All the what noise? All the normal stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. We've come to terms with that. It's yeah. just the water. Yeah. Okay, so we we have to um, close the public, public hearing. hearing. So move that the CPDC close the public hearing for tentative subdivision plan 116 West Street. Second. All those in favor? Um, we can work our way through the decision yeah. and vote on the way through the panel. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got to show up straight. This can remove these three. <laughs> I don't think I saw these three, but they're not outstanding, so that's not an issue. Yeah. So, um, is there more process um, that's needed with the um, historical commission? There is. It will be after, if, if you're willing to grant the approval. Then yeah, the I'm just is. curious of how that how that all works. So we have to go to them with regards to building permit. So as a precondition to getting a building permit, we have to go to them and present plans and, and have them make a determination that it's consistent with the character of the West Street right. Historic District. Thank you. And that's for the new house? That's correct. And then any alterations to the existing house would also require that as a separate file. Right, which seems to be stage two. Should I add that as a condition under prior to issuance of a building permit for any of us? They have to do it anyway. They have we don't to do it anyway. So in our decision, they'll be submitting the uh, maintenance reports in January. January so we So is this a correct statement? Um, all trees have been removed. All, all, tree, all trees to be removed have been marked and depicted on the definitive subdivision plans. Um, we, we have we have tree areas or yes, tree areas. There are too many to mark. The um, it's really densely populated with trees, and uh, to put notes on the plan. 
that this particular tree is going to be removed. Uh, no, I, I, I under, yeah, I understand that. So, um, so maybe we do want to change that mm -hmm. um, um, because it's just in. I see two uh, two clouded areas. It's re it's just in those two two areas. Two um, three. There's, there's actually a few of them. Um, there's some smaller areas as well that are in the area of the driveway. And that are going to be close to the tree, uh, house in the rear of the house. Oh, there's one. Yep. Right, dude. I just see these three. Right? One, two, three. When we show the house, three it's hours, harder to yeah. show the clouds. What's that? When we show the house, it's harder to show the clouds because the house is over the trees. So we showed it. We're trying to show it as best we can. Yeah. One, two, three. I guess I was just getting at we yeah. should we should rephrase that to say um, all trees to remove to be removed have been um, uh, shown in areas are shown yeah in areas depicted on the depicted on the definitive subdivision plans. Mm -hmm. Page three, where it says drainage was designed to accommodate the entire house and the rear half of the carriage house. Mm -hmm. It should say the rear half of the existing carriage house. Or, or is this intended to imply the entire existing house? I just it I took the report as the entire existing house. Uh, I thought this meant the entire new house and the carriage house, right? That's not what the existing house and the rear half of the carriage house. Okay. The existing carriage house, right? Mm -hmm. The entire existing house. The entire, the new, entire house. new house, right? The, the new entire house. new house. I'm sorry. Your new house. The existing carriage and the house. rear half of the existing carriage house. Yeah. Right. Okay. With maintenance of the snow storage area. Okay. Maintenance of the snow storage area? Yeah. Uh, well, Not I mean, really. It's in the swale. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be maintained exactly the, swale, the way the swale is. Um, however the swale is maintained is going to be the snow storage area. And it's really the underlying layers of the snow storage area. Grass clippings shouldn't be left in there. They should be collected instead. Um, it's really not you can you're not a lot you have to do for a swale. Grass clippings will clog it. That's pretty much the only thing, and you don't want tree um, things to fall on it and clog it.
My, uh, why is the, the term engineering comments, the applicant shall coordinate with the town engineer to resolve any necessary outstanding comments listed in the memo dated 4119. That's the memo we've been talking about. So that comment or condition is in prior to plan endorsement, and then it's in prior to commencement of site work, mm -hmm. and then it's in prior to issuance of building permit. Yeah, we get that a lot because Ryan has worked throughout the project, such as 24 Gould, he's still working with them. Not, not all of his memo is addressed in one shot, so the applicants continue to work with him throughout the process, but we make sure that <laughs> the engineering department is okay before we move forward with any of these. We need his sign-off. So the, the project area doesn't seem to be pointing to the right location. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's right. Well, that's, no, it's Woburn. That's pointing to Woburn. It's on the left side of 95. Sorry, 93. Actually, it looks like it's on the tracks. Yeah, it makes sense. Definitely not the right location. It's at the end of Oak Street, correct? That's the project location, yeah. So that's not where that little circle is. It's easiest on the screen when you... <laughs> yeah, right. <yeah. laughs> They're using the same um, curb cut. Do they need a driveway permit? I believe so. Did you know that but I'm not. Hill? Hill? What's that? I believe we do need driveway open permits. Okay. You should. Madama Street. He wasn't important enough. Yeah. Or she. Okay. Okay. What do you mean to move that? Um, the waivers. Any other comments, edits, questions on no, no. decision? The, the, the change on the proposed right of way, 50 feet, right? The 32. No. Yeah. You have the change about the trees. Yes. Yeah. The change just to define yeah. the mm -hmm. versus new. The typo on the gas. Yep. And then I am going to add it. A condition five on page seven under prior to issuance of building permit for any lot that that they'll need them they must receive approval from the historic commission for all items under their jurisdiction. G 
Gene and I are working to draft a checklist for all of these projects, and it would help to have it in there, I think. So uh -huh. this postmark went through that way. It wasn't in there, and they didn't know they needed historic uh -huh. approval and caused this whole yeah. thing. So. Okay. So then, so that you remember the objection. Yeah. Yeah. Right. objection, subject to jurisdiction, anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need to move to approve the definitive subdivision plan at 116 West Street. We have to vote on the waivers first. Okay, okay. sorry. That we could put them one at a time. No, no, no. You can move to approve the waivers. Um, as proposed and as amended um, for 116 West Street subdivision. Um, I'm read them all. No. No. Second. All those in favor? Now I can do the big one. Okay. I'm looking for other little X's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Move to approve the definitive subdivision plan for 116 West Street as uh, amended. Second. Discussion? Oh. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Discussed. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think so. I'll file that in. Thanks very much. Thanks. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you. All right, on to planning updates and other topics. So, I do have something, and I don't know if we can take it because it's not on the agenda, but while I was away on vacation last week, Lot release forms came in for Lyle Estates. I don't know. I didn't put it on my agenda because I did not have them before I went away. I don't know if it's something we can take without it being on the agenda. Um, we we generally don't vote on those. Right. Right, Nick. Uh, lot, lot release. We yeah, we um, endorse them. Yeah. We endorse that. I mean. No, wait. We have to vote on a lot of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had to vote on several several times because they lose the documentation. Oh, yeah. So usually there's a whole bunch of data associated with them. The engineer or DPW look at them and balance mm -hmm. out the... Right, we did the bond estimate and stuff. Unfortunately, all I have is the Form L, which I know there's more to it than that, I feel. So I just didn't know your guys' stance on it or exactly what is required. Is there this. an engineer's memo? Is there somebody's memo that says that they reviewed something? Yeah. Yeah. Take it yeah. I mean, the engineering did approve the bond estimate. They came back with a new bond estimate for work that's been completed to date and gave a new price that the applicants agreed to, but I have nothing signed. I have nothing really given to me, so, so I just want to release this. all of the lots? Yep. We already released lot one. Yeah. Prior to this, so I believe they're looking for a two, three, and four. And how much is left on the bond? I believe it was one hundred eighty-six thousand. If I remember, it's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. That's how much left is left to do. I think so. Why would really? Yeah. Say why? That yeah. I wouldn't. Me. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if this was just dropped off onto my yeah. desk. So. Is Lyle the one off of um? Lowell Street. Oh. Six slots. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah, they're not. They're not even close. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I just noticed that the other day. They have. They've got asphalt down. That's yeah, about I'm it. Not sure. That's. 
Yeah, right. I'm fine with writing on that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of work to do. Yeah. 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 <coughs> so minutes or zoning? Which do you? Um, um, I'm actually up with four one. But. I have edits to four eight, which is that I'm missing from the present list. Eight. Yes. Oh, you're missing from the present list. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, mm -hmm. um, before we dive into minutes, um, right? We need to. Um, we either need to uh, deal with the zoning mm -hmm. item or schedule another meeting. Right. That was our. That was the plan. So my yeah. plan for zoning was just to do a quick rundown of what we have and hope that we're okay with the language so far that I can send to town council and I will draft the legal ad to post next week for the June hearing. Okay. So let's do, let's do that because if we don't do that, then we do need to meet again mm -hmm. um, okay. to resolve the issues so mm -hmm. that we can, okay. <laughs> so meeting minutes can wait. <laughs> um, this can't. So. Just starting, really, everything else was cut and dry. Town Council did send me CBD language referring to MGL, but it was a one sentence thing and it was six o'clock when I got it, so I didn't add it yet because I had questions of why wasn't it different. Like we have here, you just gave one definition for hemp and marijuana referring to MGL. So I wasn't sure, is that prohibiting? Is that allowing? What what are we doing here? Um, so I just need some more answers on that one before I was okay with moving forward on that. Footnote one, we had gone over, and I believe we were all okay with lots in two districts. We are no longer going to change. So that really leaves just the mixed use stuff. Um, so I deleted most of the comments that we've gone over and run through a lot of the times and tried to clean it up a bit with a few important and outstanding comments left. Um, I believe we narrowed this definition down and that we would all agree with that um, listed under different use, different two or more permitted pr principal categories listed under different Sorry, I'll have to reword that now that I read that. doesn't make any sense. Two or more permitted pr principal categories listed under the table of uses. So we don't need that. Um, the uses must be permitted by right. So we move down. Any lot or structure within a business district may contain multiple principal use categories, which I believe was what we were trying to decipher, use first category. Yeah. Categories gives us a broader interpretation. Um, if different use categories under Table 5.3 are applied, then mixed use regulations shall apply, which we allow in Business A and Business C by special permit through the CPDC. Nowhere else in town will that be allowed. We removed a footnote seven here that Julie had added, I believe we didn't feel was needed. So then we move into the, regu the real regulations for it. a mixed use project. <coughs> that's the term I use throughout because section 10.4 and five refer to them as projects and developments as well. So I kept it simple with project. Mm -hmm. The uses may be combined either horizontally or vertically. In a mixed-use project, the uses may be combined within the same structure as described herein, or separated into different structures if more than one principal building is permitted on the lot, which when we get further in, we edit to add business A, allowing more than one principal dwelling on a lot. If you feel we shouldn't do that for mixed-use projects, we can certainly Principal building, no, not, dwelling. not dwelling. Principal building, yes. Um, but dimensional requirements, 
intensity regulation is section 6, of course, table 6.3. On a corner, you can have zero feet set back from both streets, and with a permanent shared parking arrangement with any abutting property, you may have a zero foot setback from said abutting property. Um, I'm not sure how an abutting property would feel about that, but if that's trying to incentivize shared parking, then okay. Commercial component, we agreed 25% <coughs> was okay. Um, and here is where I wanted to make sure I got the wording right, right where it residential component in the portion of a mixed-use project that fronts Main Street residential units shall be located on upper floors only and that's what we wanted correct let's go back to that zero setback thing for a second mm -hmm. I'm just not sure how we do that because I guess the assumption is that the only way for the development to work is to have the shared agreement with that mm -hmm. butter. So if the shared agreement goes away somehow, the property gets sold. There's not enough parking. Then it, but then it's not permanent. Yeah, right. So it has to be yeah, permanent. Yeah, just don't know how we get through it. But yeah. Zero that setback, that still seems tight. Right. I don't know why an abutting business would why. Well, I'm assuming that, that the parking is probably immediately available, but it might not be. Right? So if we let this new building go up to zero, the next building is either at, I guess they would be at zero <coughs> because they, right. have, they have an agreement. <coughs> they have an agreement as well. Right. For shared parking, even though <coughs> yeah. it's their property, I guess. Right. If that's the assumption. Zero just seems weird. Side. Yeah. Um, obviously, if that was the entrance to the lot, they wouldn't go, they wouldn't both go zero because they'd cut off their access. You mean zero on both sides? Yeah. 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 Right. Um, but it's zero from the from the from that abutting property. So all right, let's just let it get through the public meeting and we'll talk it out there. Yeah, and we'll hash it out then. Just trying to understand it. Just see it, if it well, doesn't work. Right. The goal it is basically it. would allow right. It's actually some of uh, some of like the plans that you and George drew years back where you have uh, two buildings next to each other with um, the ability to go Around back behind yeah. um, so that um, you're, not, you're not putting your building in the middle of the lot, you're putting it on the side to allow a driveway back behind. Um, And in, in this configuration, you'd want to be able to do that, and that same property would use that same access right. point. Okay. I, I'm not so sure how many places you, we could actually <laughs> right. have that happen. But. Okay. okay. Trying to incentivize it. <laughs> yes. Um, so this was saying that waivers would be considered if you can keep existing commercial tenants. Um, again, residential component will have 10% affordable units on 10 units or more to keep the numbers easy and go down to parking where we said we want a minimum ratio of 1.25 and end it there, no maximums nothing. Um, same thing with commercial, <laughs> provided at a minimum ratio of one per 300 square foot. I got some notes that <coughs> we're asking for too much parking. Um, That's my reaction to that number, given yeah. that we're not sure 125 is the right number anymore. I agree. 
I mean, this is something you'd get a waiver for, correct? Right, and you could, so. For the right development. I just don't want to, but, okay. <laughs> We have, we have I mean, the, the right. reason I don't mind it is because additively you get guest spots and retail spots mm -hmm. with it. Right. So. Okay. Uh, we said up to 30% of the total parking can be striped and marked as compact spaces, which I made a note of is 8 foot by 16 foot because in our zoning bylaw it's not defined and in some areas, that's not the size of a compact space. So I just wanted to make that clear. And that a comprehensive parking plan sh shall be submitted that shows that the parking for the mixed use project is sufficient in terms of the residential use as well as the commercial use, detailing how both would work together and be managed. Yes, good. I like that. Me too. I was just like to put that too. <laughs> So loading, when we say loading, shall not be staged from Main Street or any principal streets, side streets, or residential streets. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know why we need that. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you get uh, um, drones. <laughs> I don't know why we need that when we say loading spaces shall be contained entirely on the property of the mixed use project. Isn't it kind of redundant to okay. say then? Opaque. <laughs> How many times do we have to explain opaque to people? <laughs> So, like the I, Sunoco that that you have to go inside to load, is that what we're talking about? The this sh the the problem here is the word from should be on in item A. Mm -hmm. Loading shall not be staged on Main Street. <laughs> so, but that's my point. So they're saying no loading anywhere but within the property itself. So I don't know if that's... You can't stop on Main Street, though. You can't, can't stop, stop on Main Street. On I, I'm yeah. with you. However, Pref Prefectos had a big dairy truck in the middle of Main Street last week, which I know is not okay. Mm -hmm. But my point being is that um, there are... I don't know. I don't know if you can actually... You know, the loading zones behind a building? Is that what we're saying it has to be? No, not behind necessarily, but they have to get off the street. Okay. So <laughs> right now, a lot of the downtown businesses have to do it from the street, right? right. So Venetian or Clover Parks, there's an actual loading spot there, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the truckers will spot there. They'll still, they still park in that parking lot and lock mm -hmm. people in there. <laughs> we had and a then the Duncan up at Southern, South Main Street, that they always have an 18-wheeler dunks truck parked oh, from awesome. driveway to driveway. Yeah. <coughs> Which just makes a mess. And that's on the lot. So you can imagine how bad it would be to try to do it on the side street. We don't want them out in the residential streets. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah. I guess I was just thinking like a loading zone. So what we're saying is... We can... So if they wanted a loading zone, they could go to the select board and ask for a loading zone on the street. Not on Main Street. Mm -hmm. uh, on it's not ours, that's the state's, and you Understood. can't stop on it. Right. And we don't want them on the residential streets. They have to figure out how to make it work on the property. They can do similar to what Eaton Lakeview did, where Eaton Lakeview blocked off four spaces or so for a certain period during the time of eight in the, seven to eight in the morning or something, and those were for loading specifically during certain periods. So we've seen it before that they can do creative ways to manager in inside okay. like you said mm -hmm. I just didn't know if we wanted it stated kind of twice back to back just come yeah, yeah okay. I'm fine with that's fine with me mm -hmm. Makes it clear. Uh, so then I added this section because we had a note that said <laughs> what will we not waive uh, and I don't really know what that is so I added this that upon request from the applicant the CPDC may consider waiving dimensional and or other requirements from 568 which is mixed use regulations 6.0 and 6.3 which is the intensity regulations to promote the design flexibility and achieve appropriate density affordability mix of uses or design quality if it finds such waivers maintain the intent purpose and objectives of these sections 
I said the only items that will not be considered for waivers include section 5683, which is our um, affordable units. So, and then in addition, we don't want there's a floor to commercial, which makes it a mixed use, correct? Yes, the first floor. And we as said, in, as in, there's 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 a you cannot get a waiver for below 25 percent because then that would bump it out of it being a mixed use well, project. Well, I think uh, we said 25 percent, but also anticipating that we would waive that down for the right developments. No, we said did we go? We said 20. We, we we added a 30, and we said 25 was as low as we go. First floor, right. The only wrinkle on that is, tell me this. So you have 25%, right? Um, uh, it's, the it's the first floor, but you have those, um, you have upper floors residential and you have all that access space in order to get up to those residential units. So that then is deemed for the residential component. Correct. Right? And so there you would never get to 25% because that access area it means rentable. Know, What's that? Twenty-five percent rentable space or net rentable? Anybody a realtor? <laughs> Realtors? I just there's got to be a minimum of which it bumps it out of actually being mixed use. Yeah. You know, it, it something with ten percent commercial is, Not you know, is a house with a little bit of a barbershop in front of it. You know. Yeah. So how do we accommodate that? Well, I mean, the, the, let's assume that there's stair access up to the residentials and an elevator core or something. Those aren't included in the floor area of the residential either, necessarily, okay. in the unit count. Right. So where's, what's the seven? So what? if we subtracted all of that from all the floors, it still have, you know, whatever's yeah, left over is your 25%. So it still mm -hmm. works, I think. All right, I think that we could look at it and say, um, there's something that says unless a waiver for such is granted by the CPDC. I mean, I just do think that at some point in time it just stops being a mixed-use development. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of the <laughs> side of the, the woman that turned the second floor into a residential. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't they hairdresser? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Who knows what the breakdown on that one is, but that to me is not a mixed use building, even though it is. I don't know. It's like 50 50. Right. right. I just don't want to limit our development because we've heard from developers, and Jean herself felt even 25% is a bit high and hard to reach. <laughs> So what? Then it's this, not a mixed use development. Yeah. Then it's a residential development. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, get, I think that's a distinction. Yeah, like, yeah, if we're making that. all these rules for mixed use development. If they want to, if they don't want to hit 25 percent, they can follow the residential rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's other mechanisms. They can go 40 B yeah. anywhere they want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I think that's what I mean. I don't know sentence. if I guess they, I don't know I, if I'm shooting ourselves in the foot here, but I feel like that that's what a mixed use. As yeah. I, I, I guess I, I'm I'm with you on 25 percent, but it's that other component, it's that circulation circulation component. Right. So, I mean, so I let's don't not say no waivers, point. but again, I think yeah, right. this is one of those in perpetuity. Like when people who are different than us are sitting here, yep. and we've allowed for waivers. How are we clear that like mm -hmm. less than 25 percent is pretty much a residential area with a little corner sliced off for commercial? It, and maybe we say waivers no less than 20 percent. That's yeah. But then that's sort of setting that's yourself setting up, the, right? Yeah. I mean, it's. Come. I think it's yeah. yes right. or no. I think. But it. But then, how do you resolve? You can't do. You can never get to 25 percent. Right. You can if you somehow describe what that is. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> just looking. I mean, because that says the gross floor area. Dedicated. So can you change it to net? Both of them? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is it? Is it something like that? 
the floor area dedicated to within 25% of the floor area net of common common circulation elements required by the bill. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen wording like that I think in other bylaws but for, for utility and mechanicals. Right. And ancillary uses or common whatever the word is. Common. 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 Yeah. Right. So common uh, common areas for utilities, circulation. Mm -hmm. You could uh, add that in there. That sentence though. That's what we want to do. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. maybe you do that and then we don't make the restriction that no waivers are there, but we're super clear that yeah. You take that language out. Mm -hmm. We don't put the one at the bottom that says we will not do a waiver on it. Right. But we're super clear about what it is to be a mixed use development. I mean, project. So your not definition? including common areas. Well, isn't that backwards from what you want to do? If we if we're better on this, if we define this um, uh, um, better, then. I guess I would be more comfortable saying we won't give waivers on this. Right. I mean, just interestingly, when you go up to the definitions, it's just two or more permitted uses, which is fine. I think. In the law of unintended consequences, do we do this and then we end up with a whole bunch of, of residential buildings without retail because we've made it too hard? Well, we're going to be getting a lot of development that will just be residential. We're going to be shooting down a lot of stuff. That's just what's going to happen. Because it's easy, right? It's cheap. I mean, our multifamily environments are still very hard to reach. Sure. That yeah. makes a sense. long stretch. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, is there other components to this that make life easier for for a developer <clears throat> by adding at least twenty five percent of a commercial area? What what is going for you? What is your incentive to do this? We added. We, we made a lot of restrictions, yeah. but higher what what have we coverage. created in terms of an incentive? Yeah, yeah. higher lot coverage. You get higher building height. You okay. get less setbacks. So maybe that's. I mean. We don't have an economic de development director, but that's right. the message that needs to be here when someone says, you can't push me to 25%. You say, but if you put in 25%, mm -hmm. here's what you get out of it. Mm -hmm. How does this read then? Um, except for common areas for, I can't read my writing now. Except for common areas for circulation, utilities, and building services, the floor area dedicated to commercial space. Sorry, I'm pretty much the rest I was saying. Uh, the floor area so dedicated to commercial space for... Floor area dedicated to commercial space. space. Shall not be less than 25% of the total Gross. net floor area net floor <laughs> structure. Does that, is that right? So, except for common areas. Net of common areas. I think if you're gonna use the net here, we've gotta okay, seed it beforehand. The net floor area of the structure or structures. Right. So the so the net of common areas. Do I have to explain further than that? Such as common areas for circulation, utilities, structure, and building services. So is it the gross floor area, second word? Yeah. You pull that gross one out on uh, top? Too? Yeah, I don't think that's supposed to say gross. Yeah. Yeah, I had written it the other way around, but we flipped it, so, so we have to Yeah, think take about that it. one out. And then you can take the net floor area if you're using net of common. So that, just pull. Just say floor area up top. Yeah, total floor area, net of. No, in the middle. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you can pull it there. No, 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 no word there. Just floor area, that floor mm -hmm. area. And then you can take net out of that right there. Yeah, and then you're saying net of, so the okay. floor area dedicated to is not less than 25% of the floor area 
Mm. Net of. Yep. Well, let's try that. See what public meetings. Yeah, I like that. They understand yep. it. And it will, will explain what we're doing, and maybe better language will come up later. Um, and so, going back down to the waiver mm -hmm. restriction, we have 5.6.8.3, which is a residential component, mm -hmm. and we include 5.6.8.2 in that as well, which is the one we just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, that, and during the public hearing, you had to say, the reason why is that if you are not adding 25% commercial, it is a residential building. <laughs> Could have payment in lieu of one billion dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hundred penalty. Yep. Okay. So it sounds like we're kind of yep. good there. Yep. Yep. Uh, and when we move to intensity regulations, we have updated the definition a little bit. Um, we had included language on the frontage of the cul de sac bulb, as we saw. Uh, so this is where we say gross, gross floor area. Do you just want to edit that 6.2.4.3 as per what we just did, correct? Yes, but it's in the title called gross floor area. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I believe Julie had added business A district in here in this first sentence in apartment 40 and business A districts the gross level multifamily dwelling I deleted business A because we said multifamily dwelling is not the same as mixed use and I think we should keep those multifamily restrictions as tight as possible yeah. um, but yes now I can edit that I'm just going to copy and paste from do you, do you have any questions or comments as we're going along? Or I think you're over-regulating. You've obviously never developed real estate or tried to do commercial real estate. You know that? This happens in every town. <laughs> you're, you're just making it so difficult by over-regulating. If you don't see it out there, you know, you're missing out. You know, trying to go through all that, exactly what it says, people are going to go on. What are you talking about? You would have been off with gross versus net, but you're just completely trying to, you're trying to make decisions of how you think the town's gonna be in 20 years. If you ever stop and take a look with the way it was 20 years ago, you may not like it, but this is the way people are now. So you're kind of over-regulating, trying to determine other people's, how they're gonna do things for like the next 25 years, and you probably don't have, you get more difficult. But that's just my, I guess we'll find out at the public meeting. Yeah, essentially that's what planning is, right? I mean, that's that's what it's we're planning, here to do. but it can be over development from sometimes that people have never really done it before, like certain things of development. Not easy. And way to attract business here is not to say about your twenty five percent, but Reading needs to, as I heard from the Dollar Tree lady who didn't like that, is how are you going to attract the right businesses? So people can get 25% commercial space. So they can build something that would attract someone to come in to do 25% commercial space there. Because most developers aren't going to put the business in there. They're going to rent it out to somebody. I mean, it happened in Wakefield. They turned down the, the garage, and a lot of businesses didn't come into Wakefield. Turned down which garage? The public uh, garage they wanted to do like three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. by the town was going to give away land for the assisted building and they were going to build a parking garage and a bunch of people that had no understanding of it so they didn't build it and then a lot of businesses like Monero Bread was going to go in there but once the parking garage going to go in a lot of these businesses were not going there was no parking so anyway well I don't think having less than 25% commercial in a mixed use makes it a mixed use. So uh, if we're over-regulating by trying to maintain that, then that's fine. We don't need more residential. Well, you'll find out, I guess, in the future. That's well, all. 
Right. So on that, the the point here was is that Town of Reading only has so much commercial, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so uh, what we what we do know is the the marketplace is for not for commercial property, right? It's for residential, and it has been for now for sort of decades, going on decades in, in, in a town like this. So what we want to do is encourage development, um, not turn our entire commercial uh, commercial area into a residential area because we could we could do that in a heartbeat, yeah. right? Um, uh, what we want to do is make sure that we maintain that commercial stock, which is the first floor, and allow we we this is actually allowing for more um, flexibility so that they can build second, third, and fourth, fourth stories, right? Um, and say if we don't encourage the if we don't want the twenty five percent, then we can just be 100% residential. But I think we've heard. That's another mechanism, by yeah. the way. It's not the only um, overlay in that area. Well, this is an overlay of the existing. No, I, I can do, I mean, it's um, it's very difficult to cross Route 28. You know, if you go to the Santander Bank and try to go, we want to go left, it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So I actually, don't really go to one of the businesses in, in that area unless I know there aren't, they're going to be in the direction I'm heading in. I don't bother trying to cross the traffic like where the car wash is and stuff. That's, yeah. you know, it's a nightmare. So I, yeah. yeah, certainly we have a whole lot of structural problems in town. But that's in every town. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In all sorts of towns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, the biggest, uh, to me, the biggest structural problem is that the commercial area is too narrow. And so there is no parking. There is no the, mm -hmm. it, it sort of um, let residential, you know, um, or I shouldn't say it that way, right? Consume. Re yeah, the residential areas have consumed any of the commercial businesses, and yeah, so there's not know. enough. I don't know not what not enough footprint. Like I don't know what which ones were there first, and yeah, which, I don't either. Happened, but, yeah, um, yeah, but it is. It's just so narrow, and. The roadway doesn't help. No. no. Uh, so landscaped area, I again, remove business A because we're not talking about multifamily dwellings and we'd like to keep that a little more restrictive. This is where we say buildings per lot, that business A can have more than a principal building. National controls. So again, multifamily has all these restrictions of a 40,000 square foot area, 30 yard side setback, rear setback, 25% lot coverage maximum. Uh, mixed use, we get rid of the square foot area. We get rid of a uh, front yard setback in business A, smaller inside. We do more in the rear to allow parking in the rear and protect the residential people abutting the rear of those properties and we allow you to increase your lot coverage up to 60% and give you more building height. So I think we've all agreed on those numbers. No, what's a building height? A building, height. building height is 45, 45 and in business C 55 for whatever reason I believe that keeps in line with um, hotels in business C. So. Weird, but so uh, that building height is the same as what you can do for a one and two family. No, it's higher. Forty-five. One and two family dwellings. Oh, sorry, in business A up here, right. That's existing now. What's that? That's an existing number. Right. Yes, yeah, the forty-five is an existing right. number. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. If I'm I just, don't think I'm we just want to go higher than that. But no, no, no. I'm just thinking that through. Yeah, it's so yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. 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 MF Charles. I mean, that's that's been the basis for a lot yes. of things. Yep. Mm -hmm.
So footnote four, which we reference in a lot of those in business A and C districts, the required yard measured from a street which is not designated as the front lot line shall be 20 feet for any building other than a multifamily dwelling, which shall be 30 feet. So again, I don't remember where we left off on that. I think we were okay with it, trying to figure out why and what exactly that said, but then we say again, corner lot may have zero foot setback, which we've stated before, so I don't know if we need to reiterate both of these <coughs> uh, sentences, but I have no problem with it, obviously. But we do state both of them elsewhere. Zero setback? Is that what we have on the corner lot? Yeah, that's what we have. Do we have a front? Do we have a zero setback on the front? Yes. Yep. But 60% lot coverage maximum, so I don't know that they could get zero setback. Backs on side front. No, I guess that will, that makes sense. I mean, with yeah. the corn lot. Yeah, but that will be an interesting discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll keep those sentences there. Doesn't sound like there's issues with reiterating them. And just as we go down into landscape, I simply added the sentence that you guys had said, when abutting a residential use, in a minimum of a six-foot planting strip shall be used as a landscape buffer to the non-residential development. Kind of gets lost in there, I think, but I believe Tony had originally brought that up and Everyone seemed to agree with that sentiment. Mm -hmm. I haven't really heard issues of budding landscape. It hasn't seen, as long as it's upkept, we've had issues with it not being upkept, but I've never really had anyone complain that there's not enough landscape buffer without this sentence. If you guys are happy with that, I'll start the black and bold versions, which okay. yep. for some reason isn't much different than track changes, but that's how people like it here, I guess. So I'll start doing that and send it to town council. And... One quick question. Why will these be posted for um, public hearings so for all the, all the amendments? So that was my next question. We are discussing posting it for June 10th which is our original hearing date. And when I look at that agenda, it's, it's pretty full. Um, I have two site plans coming in. We have the continued hearings from tonight and whatever else comes along along the way. Um, if I can post it for June 10th with the ability to continue to about June 23rd, I believe. Um, so that's one option, but I don't know how we, so we can do that, we can that route, and if there's not enough time on the 10th, we can continue to the 24th, given that that works for you guys. So which, which is our regular scheduled meeting? The 10th. So this will be part of the 10th? Yes. And we would present to whoever shows up? Is that how it works? Yes, I've never done it before, so I don't 
exactly know the process, but hire Julie for that night. <laughs> News on that, actually. Oh no! What? Wait till after. Close. Okay. <laughs> So um, if we can't get to it to the 10th, then we need to schedule a meeting. Correct. Um, so really this is we timing have to, to make it to November, correct? Right. Really, we have until July, but I don't want to push that off into it, was our feeling before. So we can aim for the 10th, but I think if you're all available, the 24th as well, we should just keep that in mind, just in case. June. June. And we can do the 17th, we can do the 3rd, um... You cannot start the 3rd of what? June. Oh. Well, I mean, that, I'd have to get my legal ads out pretty quickly for that. Which is another problem. meeting on the 10th? Yep. Mm -hmm. So the 17th or the 24th? Yeah. I can't do the 24th, but if everyone else can, that probably is a better date. Mm -hmm. um, and I will be here on the 17th. Yeah, I mean, right now I can do either one. As well, I don't know change. Mm -hmm. no, let's just pick a day because the allergy meds are starting to wear off. Yeah, what's your Rachel? Do you have your? I don't know. I mean, yeah. I it's tough to me for me to do more than one day a month just in general, okay. so because I travel. One day a week, every week, and two days a week, every other week, so. What? That's brutal. Yeah, it's officially brutal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you want to, let's try and do the 17th that way that I'll know that I'll be here, and, because if we try the 24th, then we, <laughs> right. we That's fine. just might not. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll still post for the 10th, and if we can get through most of it there, that would great. be great. And if we have to add the 17th, we can. So to answer your question, June 10th. Well, so we're going to try the 10th. I had a feeling it was going to be, but I was just double-checking. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'll have those legal ads out. they got to be done by next Monday, so. Let's put them on the right. paper. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you for coming. Can we, uh, I wrap? Is that possible? Yeah. Or? I think so. Move do you, to adjourn? Do, wait, do, do you have anything else that you um, need to go over? Either? I do not. Okay. No. I'm fine with continuing minutes again. All right. So. Yeah. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? 